So guys what if Naruto was descendant of Almighty God and Percy Jackson and son of the Heavenly Rabbit? Naruto hasn't been happy since the fourth great ninja war had ended. Once the war was over and the beasts were free, everything went to shit. The nations had betrayed his trust. They sealed away the halves of the Bijuu again and bound him in chakra-resistant chains. The only Bijuu he drew in fully was Kurama again, as he would not let that bastard Sasuke hold him. Apparently not anyone could hold any Bijuu, and Sasuke was the only one who could hold Kurama. He also made sure to draw on the Bijuu souls. So even if they had them inside they couldn't be controlled or used. The only ones there for him was Tsunade, Gara and Shizune as they didn't betray him, they made sure he didn't die of starvation from being caged in a dungeon. The only reason they locked him up was because they couldn't hold him down with seals due to the Bijuus overpowering it, but without Chakra or the Bijuu cloak he was stuck. But unbeckoned to the others with Tsunade's help he was overriding the seal to the chains and to his own seal. He needed to break the chain seal first and then head draw on the halves of the Bijuu. He knew the risks, but the Bijuu all agreed to it rather than let their power be out of their grasps once again. Naruto sighed you already? He asks the Bijuu. Hell yeah Kit. Let it rip Kurama says giving him a mental fist bump. No matter what happens Kit we thank you for helping and befriending us, he says before Naruto smiles and sets to work. He takes a deep breath and focuses the little Bijuu chakra he could access, as he had been storing it up for over a year and a half, and even then it wasn't much, he hoped it worked, he took a deep breath and sent it rocketing through the chains, they shattered under the immense weight of the demonic energy. He took ragged breaths and drew forth his cloak form and frowned as he felt multiple energy sources coming to him, he needed to rush. He ran through the hand seals the Bijuu had drilled into him and slammed his hands on the ground sage art. Attraction of the tails. He called out as he erupted in even more golden flames. A matter of seconds later chakra of numerous colors crashes into him. That was when it all went to crap, the energy collided too quickly and instead, if just fusing the halves of the nine into holes, it made the nine fuse back into one. He was unintentionally reforming the Juubi. He tried to stop it, but it was too strong. Karama and everyone else am so sorry he says in a somber tone. Karama lets out a sad chuckle. We don't blame you kid, we knew the risks, but at as long as you are in control. We don't mind he says before their personalities meld back into the Juubi. Naruto struggles to hold control as the golden flames turn silver and horns grow from his forehead like the sage of the six paths. He opened his eyes to see Sasuke and the village leaders minus Tsunade and Gara in front of him. Beast get back in your chains and release the Bijuu we know you took them, Anoki says as he hovers near A and May. Naruto lets out a sad chuckle, can't do that as I promised did guard them, and they aren't here anymore, he says as he looks to them forming his cloaked form, which was the same from his cloaked form, he when he originally held all the Bijuu, but his horns that he just grew became larger and, his eyes changed, not that he could see but the others could, Sasuke glared at him with pure hate, Naruto's eyes were a more perfected version of his Sharingan Rinnegan eye, even though it had been three years since gaining this eye, he had made no progress in unlocking any of their Rinnegan abilities. Naruto stood up to them and glared at them. You abused mine and the Bijuus trust. You sealed them up again and chained me up for three goddamn years, all because you were power-hungry cowards. He yells at them unconsciously making the Tomo spin in his eyes. Not only that, but you made me pull them in and cause them to disappear into the Juubi. So either leave me be or I will end you. He yells glaring with full malice at the group in front of him. The ninja behind the cages were struggling to stand under the killer intent in front of them. Sasuke draws his sword and summons his eyes, only to find massive pain in his left eye but he shook it off, dope you were too weak with those beasts, and you dared take away my chance to use that fox of yours, oh well, he'll just rip the Juubi and use it, he says as he charges him, Naruto in the blink of an eye ends up behind Sasuke can hit Sasuke with an insanely powerful kick, he was grateful Tsunade taught him her super strength as he was chained up, though this was his first time using it actually, but thankfully his chakra control was better than it was when he and Kurama butted heads back when he was young, Sasuke gets sent through the underground building, and he looks to the cages and flares the Juubis chakra, he was was confused why it was being so complacent but head crossed that bridge. Once he got out of here and away from the village, he summoned the truth-seeking orbs and two chakra rods just in time to block against his lighting lariat. He ducked under the strike and landed two hits on the rakage's chest, sending him flying into May. He sees Anoki flying towards him with a dust release in his hands. He fires three truth-seeking orbs at the man to negate the dust release and send him crashing back. He flattened another to create a shield against a lava shot that May fired at him. He then summoned the Shikujo to block Sasuke's sword. Sasuke glared at him Amaterasu. He yells trying to burn the dobe's legs off, but is shocked when the flames don't come out, in fact it hurts his head greatly to even try. Why was his Sharingan acting up and why couldn't he use his Sharingan Rinnegan fusion eye? Naruto noticed that Sasuke was only using one arm as the other was hanging limply from his side, and half of his face was soaked in blood. Seemed the one hit he landed damaged him greatly, 
He didn't really want to kill anyone here, just incapacitate them, he evaded the strikes, confused why everyone was so slow, these were supposed to be top tier shinobi, but to him, they were as fast as Genin. He ducked under dual strikes from Ai and Sasuke and landed a palm strike on the two, sending them rocketing back again. He dashed after Ai and grabbed his ankle and swung him towards Anoki with great speed, shocking the man as they both crashed through the building again. All he needed to do was take out Mei, and then he could run. He summoned the orbs around his hand and spiraled them into a drill and hit Mei with great speed. She tried to use lava to protect her, but the truth-seeking orbs negated it. She fired out through wall, and Naruto quickly left out the underground base. He had been trapped under the Leaf Village where the root headquarters used to be. He summoned clones to help find a way out, but after a couple minutes he grew tired and summoned a and shuriken and fired it at the ceiling in the large training area he found himself at. The ceiling exploded and revealed the sky above him, but before he could fly out, he had to dodge a large arrow made of fire and purple energy. He looked over and frowned at Sasuke standing in his Tengu Susano with a bleeding A holding up an unconscious Mei. Anoki was limping greatly, Dob we won't let you escape, those beasts are to be used as weapons. That idiotic sage didn't know what he was doing he said as he drew out two swords and dashed towards Naruto. Naruto noticed his Susanoo was faster as he dodged the slashes and fired truth-seeking orbs at Sasuke, they seemed to weaken its armor as it was slowly getting slower. Naruto changed one orb into a familiar blade, the blade of Zabuza Kubikirabacho. He swung the blade down and severed an arm of the Susano. He jumped up and slashed at the forehead where Sasuke was and shattered it and hit Sasuke fast and hard straight in the face, sending him crashing through the back of his Susano. The dashed at him again, but Naruto ducked underneath it and hit his elbow, shattering his elbow, and kicked him hard in the chest, crashing him into Anoki again. He sighed as Mei was still unconscious. This was his chance. He flew upwards and out of the underground base and looked out to see a new massive village. Turned out he wasn't under the leaf village. He was under a brand new village that seemed to have pieces of each village. Maybe he was under there for more than three years, with the progress they made in a joint village he didn't quite know. He lowered down on the building that had the fire symbol on it and eased out of his cloaked form to find his horn still there. He didn't mind, but it would take some getting used to. Luckily it was the dead of night, so not many saw him. He sneaked his way in. He needed to find Tsunade. He sneaked around the building as he knew any Anbu that saw him walled reported to Tsunade, but to the others as she was the only one beside besides Gara and Shizun that tried to help him. He eventually found her behind her desk drinking sake. He chuckled mentally at her and lowered from his hiding spot. Obachan he says with a smile making her jump and smile happily once she saw him. She hugged him tightly and cried silently Brad, don't scare me like that, I'm glad you finally got out, she says patting his cheek. He smiled as she passes him a scroll. He opens it and unseals the contents to see clothes and his necklace she had given him. She turns around for him to change. He now wore black cargo pants with an orange shirt and long sleeved black jacket and black shinobi sandals. The necklace was proudly displayed on around his neck and his headband was around his waist, as his new set of horns kind of made it difficult to wear it on his forehead. Tsunade turned around and frowned once she saw his forehead and eyes. Naruto what happened? She asks as she activates the privacy seals in her office. He sits down and starts explaining everything that happened from him breaking out to the point where he got here. She nodded well that explains the eyes and horn she says confusing him, what about my eyes? He asks looking for a mirror, she hands him a small one, and nearly dropped it when he looked in it, gone were his blue eyes, and now were two pure red orbs with concentric circles with nine tomo in total. He had the Juibus eyes, not Sasuke's version which was purple, but the true Shinju eyes. Wow that is shocking he says as he sits down another thing, the Juubi isn't fighting for any kind of control. It seems almost calm in me he says to her. She sighs and nods yes I can explain that, but I think you should go to your mindscape to see it first, as it will probably explain it a lot better she says pouring another glass of sake. He looks confused but sighs and nods fine, but if I show any signs of losing control hit me hard okay, he says getting a nod from Tsunade. He sits down in a meditative stance and fades into his mindscape. Mindscape. He frowned as his mindscape had changed yet again. Now it was a massive clearing full of trees. But the most noticeable tree was the Giganticon he hadn't seen since the fourth shinobi was. This time it was fully bloomed and the moon reflected the Shinju eye on it. He walked around the clearing until he heard a tremendous boom behind him. He turned around to see a giant ten-tailed wolf looking down at him. Ah so you finally came to visit it says with a grin. The weird part was that it wasn't a menacing grin. It seemed almost kind. He stepped back Juubi. He asks confused, last he saw the Juubi was not a wolf, if anything it was a weird human, slug thing or in Kagaya's case a badger of some kind. The wolf huffs my name is Shinju mind you, and I am the ten-tailed wolf it says as it walks over to the massive blooming tree, 
But I thought you were a weird human slug badger thing he says as he cautiously follows. He then is confused more as he hears the Juubi, now named Shinju laughing. Oh boy that was my incomplete form, what I take when others try to draw my power for impure reasons. It's been a long time since I've been united with my true soul again. Since I am back together my true form is back and boy does it feel good to have my fur again, he says as he waves his tails. Wait I'm really confused, Tsunade Bachan told me to talk to you as Yao'd explain everything he says making the wolf look at him with his red eyes. It side figure figured Shed shoved the duty onto me, okay listen up kid, I really wanna explain this just once he says getting Naruto's attention, he sat down in front of the wolf and got ready to listen, the wolf nodded long ago my soul was in your mother, now I'll explain how I know your mother in a bit, so don't interrupt he says stopping Naruto from speaking, he pouts, but lets him continue, now my soul had been with your mother for a long time, as she took her mortal aspect of Kashina Uzumaki, so she could bring peace, but she eventually changed her mind when she met your father, then the Beto happened he spat out the name like Venom when he attacked and released the fraction of me and killed your parents. She transferred my true soul into you as a last will. I worked to keep the Kaiubi Kurama at bay while you were little and even helped you by giving you little bursts of strength at times he says looking up at the sky. But then that man Madara he says with worse venom than when he mentioned Ibido. He reformed me without my soul making my power. A soulless husk and full of uncontrolled raging power. Now yes they took control over it, but in no way did they have full power over me. Then he tainted your mother when she resurrected and made it, so she didn't even notice her own son, he says with pure hatred in his voice. Naruto was following it so far, apparently his mother had attracted Shinja's soul and gave it to him, but the major part that he was confused at was when he mentioned Madara bringing her back, wait, when did I fight my mother? He asks seriously confused. The Shinju sighs but not an annoyance, more upset or sad kid. Before I tell you just know this, Madara was the avatar for her to use to revive herself. His soul was so evil and dark it tainted her so badly that it broke her mind. Now if I was able to connect to her, I could fix her, he says, getting a nod of acknowledgement from the boy. He takes a deep breath you are the son of Minato Namikaze and Kagaya Atsutsuki, he says dropping a bombshell on Naruto. He stands up quickly what how can that even be, my mother is Kashina Yuzumaki. He yells in shock, Shinju sighs yes you are as Kashina was her mortal aspect that she took as she was trapped, she used it originally to try and reform me, but only got the nine-tailed part, she then met your father and fell in love, and saw how he could bring peace without using the infinite Tsukiyomi. Your father knew who she truly was and still loved her, the only ones who knew of it was him, and Tsunade as Tsunade was her best friend he explains making Naruto rub his temples. So I am apparently the son of a goddess, and I fraud against her and trapped her in a moon-like construct he says finishing it in a defeated and sad tone trying to keep tears back, Shinju frowned kid remember Madara had messed with her when she inadvertently used him to revive herself, if we can get back to where she is, I can break her out and even fix her easily, he says calming Naruto, Naruto nods and wipes the tears do you know how to get there? he asks, Shinju huffs of course, I am the great primordial Shinju, the god tree, give me an hour or so, and I can track her energy, and we can use your new eyes to warp there, but first I want my gift back from this vile world, I want my chakra back, Tsunade, Shizun, and that Gara boy can keep it as they are kind, and even help you when others try to imprison you, after all you did for them it's disgusting how everyone repaid you he says glaring off into the distance, Naruto sighs maybe it's for the better, how do I do it? He asks as two of Shinja's tails tap his palms to reveal both sage markings, sun on right and crescent moon on left, tap them with each marking and it'll protect them from the technique, also the sun mark will still heal others greatly, and the moon mark will help create seals, and even make warp points, he says as Naruto nods, thanks Shinju, do you want me to release you after we save my mom? he asks. Shinju contemplates it for a moment, but shakes his head naw. What kind of grandfather would I be if I didn't spend time with my grandson? He says making Naruto crash down in shock. Grandpa. He says shocked. Shinju chuckles yup. Kagaya is the daughter of myself and the Shinto goddess Amaterasu. He'll fill you in on all that later. He says as Naruto gets up. Well that's a lot to take in in the span of an hour or so. He says making Shinju chuckle more. Just head back to Tsunade and mark her and the others and I will help you with the hand signs to take back chakra he says as Naruto nods and fades from the mindscape. Outside world. Naruto opened his eyes to see Tsunade being berated by Shizun and Gara bearing the door with sand as he could hear others banging on it from the outside. Shizun stopped once she noticed noticed Naruto standing. She went over and hugged him, Neri-chan I'm so glad you got free, she says with a smile as Gara looked to him. As am I Naruto, but you will excuse me from giving you a handshake, as I am keeping the other ninjas from entering, he says in his calm tone. Naruto chuckles and tagged him with both hands confusing him a bit, he then went and did the same to Tsunade and Shizun, okay Brad, what was that all for? 
Tsunade asks as she saw the marks on his hands, the Shinju apparently wants his chakra back, but gave you three permission to keep it, as you all looked out for me and tried to protect me, he says as Tsunade nods. Did he explain everything she says looking him in the eyes with a serious look on her face? He nods yes, and how Madara corrupted mom he says getting a nod from her, Shizun looks confused, as does Gara ill explain once I'm done he says getting nods from them, ready Shinju. He asks getting ready, yay kid just go into the cloaked form, and I will take control over your arms he says as Naruto bursts into his silver cloaked form, Naruto's arms run through a series of hand signs, and then he slams them down great sage art. Uprooting of the gift. He yells out as the air colors to light blue, the color of chakra as it all flows into Naruto. Just stay calm, and I can handle the massive influx he says as Naruto focuses on drawing it into him. He could hear outrage cries from all over as he drew in the last bit of chakra. He wished he could see the team's face when he realized he lost his precious eyes. Naruto turned to them and smiled. Gara noticed the lack of attacks on the door and just kept his sand up there and sat down as he no longer needed to focus as much on it. Naruto then got to explaining everything to them. Shizun was a bit skeptical but Gara believed his friend completely. He knew Naruto was not one to lie, and the fact he used a sage art outside of sage mode spoke to the truth behind it. Tsunade turned to Shizun Naruto speaks the truth. Sadly Kagaya was corrupted when she used Madara, but hopefully she will be able to be saved, she says getting a nod from Naruto. Shinju is trying to find her energy signature or something, and I am to use my eyes with his help to go to her. But first I want to grab some stuff he says as he summons 10 clones. He turned to them go and grab what I have planned. If anyone gives you trouble just summon a Rasengan to scare them a bit. He says as they nod and dash up at high speeds. Naruto turns to them and smiles. Since no one has chakra except me and you three. I decided to grab some useful things. Most likely Shinju will influence a clone or two to grab some stuff he thinks I need as well he says as they nod. An hour later the clones return holding a massive storage scroll. Good job guys. Just in time Shinju said he locked onto mom. He says as he dispels the clones and straps the scroll to his back. The clones got everything he wanted and a few things he didn't know the Shinju even knew where they were. He turned to the group you guys stay safe until I return he says getting a smack in the back of the head by Tsunade. Brat we are strong shinobi and everyone else has no chat chakra, will be fine, just go save Kagaya and cure her, I miss my old friend she says getting a chuckle from Naruto, ready Shinju? He asks as he goes into his cloaked form and activates his new eyes, of course, let's go save my daughter and your mother he says as he causes Naruto's eyes to spin, Naruto focuses his chakra into his eyes Kamui. He calls out creating a tear in front of him. He leaps through multiple tears layered up on themselves. When he reaches the end, it reveals himself standing before the massive moon he had inadvertently trapped his own mom in, now what? He asks as he looks around and inspects the moon, you tag the moon thing with your marks, and then you need to be fast and tag her before she wakes, Shinju says as he frowns at the moon. He still hated how his body is trapped in the moon. The only reason he went on a rampage in the first place was because those kids of hers got power hungry. Kagaya had made a deal that he would let his chakra flow for three years or until the war ended. After the war he tried to take it all back, but Hagoromo and Hamura got greedy and didn't want their power to go. Then everything went to shit as he was divided and Kagaya sealed. He shook off those thoughts and got back to helping Naruto. Naruto walked up to the moon and steeled his nerves, he tagged the moon, and instantly it broke apart, he took to jumping into it, and he saw his mother's body falling, he flew quickly towards her, just before he got there she opened her eyes, she was about to say something until Naruto tagged her on her shoulders, instantly the whole moon was shot apart, as was he as he was sent flying back quite forcefully, did I get her? He asks as he groans and gets up. Shinju nodded yes you did kid. This is her godly aura returning to her and her regaining her own body. He says as they see her float down from the sky. Her heim kimono was completely fixed as was her arm. He could see that Zetsu's eyes glaring at him from her sleeve. Mother, that boy is back. Should I kill him? It asks only to be shocked as his mother hugs the boy tightly to her chest, crying heavy tears. As Sachi. She cries as Naruto cries and hugs her back. It is okay mom, Shinju told me everything. I'm so sorry for hurting you he says petting her head as he cried. She pulls away dad. Is he inside you? She asks, he nods and gets to explaining everything that happened for nearly the three time today. She frowned I'm so sorry you had to suffer so much, but it's all over now. Peace is there as no one has chakra anymore and will never wield it ever again. She says getting a nod from him. Mother. The Zetsu says from her sleeve what is going on. Why are you calling him your son? It asks confused Kagaya frowns as she forgot that Zetsu was in her sleeve, remember Naruto I told you about when you were young. She asks getting the blob to move from her sleeve and nod, well this is him, the only reason neither of us noticed was because Madara infected us, but don't worry your brother forgives you, don't you Sachi.
She asks in a kind tone, Naruto nods sorry about everything, if I knew you were my brother in a sense I won't have fraught you too, but as she said it's all better now he says holding out a fist, the Zetsu looks cautious, but bumps fists back, the Gaia smiles and hugs her son again, I missed you so much Sachi, now let's get back and see Tsunade, and maybe cause some mischief, I seem to have gotten that from my Kishina side she says as she opens a tear as they walk through Tsunade's office, once in the office Shizune steps back in shock as Tsunade gets up to hug her friend, Gara smiles softly, glad to see his best friend have his mother again, moments later a flash of light fills the room, and a woman with dark black hair is standing before them, she wore a blood red kimono with a black obi, on her waist was two swords on her, was, the first one has a black sheath with a golden hexagonal guard and white clothed handle, the other had a very dark red almost black sheath, with a black clothed handle, its guard reminded them of the Sharingan, as it had three commas meeting, together with their ends pointing outwards, as a black ring connected the ends, the Gaia smiles at the woman as she hugs her close, mom, she says smiling as the woman smiles back, oh Kagaya dear I'm so glad you are back to being the darling girl I gave birth to she says as Naruto stares in confusion until he hits his fist on his open palm, as if to say he figured it out Amaterasu. He says proud to remember that bit of info, the woman turns to him and squeals as she hugs him, burying his face in her generous chest, so you are my grandchild that holds my husband and saved my daughter she says nearly suffocating him before Kagaya pulls her off, mother stop suffocating my child, she says glaring at her, Amaterasu frowns fine, yes I am the Shinto goddess Amaterasu, goddess of the sun, creation and all that good stuff, but first I want to reward my adorable grandchild for saving my realm, she hears grumbling from Naruto's stomach, not his hunger, it sounded like a person, she sighs fine darling our realm the grumbling stops, she thinks for a second before donning a look as if to say a light bulb went off in her head, she takes her swords out from her sash and hands them to him, here, since the Shintos have made peace amongst themselves, I have no need for my swords anymore, plus, since we are the leaders of heaven peace has been in all pantheons, except for one she says the last part in a quiet tone, Naruto looks at the blades are you sure? He asks as he holds them in his hands, of course as one, they will help you gain power over your new eyes abilities and two, what kind of grandma would I be, if I didn't spoil my grandchild she says with a smile, Naruto smiles, yesterday he had no one but Tsunade, Shizune and Gara, but now he had a mother, a grandmother and a grandfather, he wipes away tears thanks Oba-chan, he says getting another squeal from the goddess, Kagaya holds her back from glumping her son again, she collects herself and clears her throat, I might as well explain the blades, the one with the golden guard is named Yamato, that blade represents my sun aspect as well as it should help boost your Rinnegan abilities, as it has some power over space from when it was blessed by another deity, the red sheath blade represents the aspect forced on me, the black flames of the Sharingan, its name is Ten, no Kuroi Hono, literally meaning the black flame of heaven, it will help you with the Sharingan aspects, and the flame will only burn what you want instead of everything she says with a kind smile, Naruto stares in shock at the blades as he straps them to his sides, why are you giving me such powerful blades? he asks confused, she smiles sadly a bit well you see I sort of need your help honey she says confusing him, you see there is only one pantheon that has been giving us all trouble, it is the Greco-Roman pantheon, for eons they have had overthrows of power, and that bastard Zeus has even tried to fight me and the others for the throne of heaven, when the Shintos were voted to rule over unanimously, it is we have had peace the longest, with only the recent trouble the only trouble we've seen in eons, sure there were ninja wars, but nothing involving my husband ever before she explains to him, he sighs as he figures where this is is going you want me to go there and help them out with their trouble. He asks getting a nervous nod from her, Naruto groans and sits down fine, but I want something to make sure no one will zap me for being there and what about mom? He asks getting a warm smile from Amaterasu, well one you are immortal from holding my husband in you, and considering you are three-fourths part god, plus my blessing will keep Zeus from zapping you she explains, but your mom will be needed in heaven for some time but she will visit, and Black Zetsu will stay with you to stay in contact with her, and since he isn't a god he isn't really allowed there she says getting the blob to grumble, but except, the Gaia frowns, you want my son to go to the Greek's realm, without the originator's permission and help bring peace. You know how guarded they are against outsiders and beings from different pantheons she says making a Amaterasu sigh and nod, Lady Chaos gave me permission to send three people over, Naruto, Zetsu and Shinju, and I have a backstory all set up, thanks to a bet I made and one against her, Naruto will be a pseudo son of chaos, in name only no blessing, he will keep Zetsu and Shinju silent as that would take a lot of explanation and would break the illusion, 
But that doesn't mean he can't use the cloak or eyes, as Chaos has many tremendous powers she says creating a cup of tea and sits down. Naruto will have free roam around her realm and permission to do as he wishes, as long as it doesn't cause too much trouble, she says with a knowing smirk that makes him embarrassed. Also he will get the correct knowledge of that realm, as sending you into new territory with no info is incredibly dangerous, she says calming Kagaya's nerves. Kagaya nods and holds her son's hand and to transfer Zetsu into the sleeves of his jacket, you be safe Sachi, and don't be afraid to use Zetus to send me a message, he will always be able to go to me, even if I am in heaven, the message will get to me before he needs to leave, she explains getting a nod from him, she tears up and kisses his forehead, be safe Sachi, I just got you back, I don't want to lose you she says stroking his whisker marks, don't worry mom, we'll get time to hang out since I'm immortal apparently he says with a smile, Kagaya nods as a Amaterasu chimes in plus, once he is done here he would be easily made a god, we just need him as a demigod, until he fixes everything to come, when that happens, he will gain his god hood she says, making Kagaya smile brightly. Finish soon so we can be a family again she says kissing his cheek once more. Naruto chuckles at his mother and nods I'll do my best he says as he turns to his grandmother, so when do I need to leave? He asks as he adjusts his jacket to give Zetsu more space. Amaterasu flashes away her cup and stands, clapping her hands with a smile. Right now so say bye to your friends honey, she says stepping away, waiting for him near a portal she created. He turns to Gara and extends a hand try and keep everyone in line Gara. at least you could keep your sand your mother gave you, he says making reference to the magnet release his actual mother gave him and not Shukaku. Gara smiled and shaked his friend's hand try and stay out of trouble Naruto. I don't want my friend to pass on he says making Naruto chuckle and rub the back of his neck. Shizun smiled and hugged him close stay safe Naruto and maybe find a good girl she says winking as she kisses his forehead. He chuckled and went to Tsunade. You have a grandmother, so no grandma crap from you, she says with a smirk. Okay auntie he says flashing his trademark grin. Tsunade chuckles better than grandma. Keep safe out there and don't be afraid to send a summon over to keep contact she says as she kisses his forehead as well. Naruto says one last goodbye before turning to his grandmother, I'm ready, where will I be arriving at? He asks curious, Amaterasu smiles, you will be arriving outside their camp, don't worry chaos will claim you later she says as she touches his scroll, causing it to glow for a second. I merely modified a few things in there and added some things also my blades won't have any trouble destroying creatures in this realm she says before hugging him confusing him a bit, but hell figure it out later. Thank you for agreeing to this honey, it'll be watching over you as will your mother she says with a smile as Naruto nods and heads through the portal. Amp half blood. He looked around to see himself in a forest. He stood up from a crouch and dusted off his pants and looked at Zetsu. Look about everything I said to you before I'm sorry about that. I didn't know you were a sibling of mine or something he says nervous. Zetsu sighs relax I understand the situation. I just didn't realize you to be my mother's son. You gave off no aura like mother or any similarities he says closing his eyes. How about a new start, forget the past. He asks him. Naruto smiles and nods id like that. And the next time I get ill find something with bigger sleeves. He says getting a chuckle from Zetsu. Watch out Naruto. There are a mass of creatures nearby. He says getting Naruto's attention as he walks through the forest. He frowned as he saw two massive beasts with one eye. Each wielding clubs in front of four kids. Two males and two females. The oldest male has short blonde hair. The other has scraggly brown hair. And what seemed to be goat legs. The oldest female had short black hair with electric blue eyes. While the other had wavy blonde hair and gray eyes. They they weren't just up against the cyclops, the name of the beasts, according to the knowledge his grandmother gave him. He could see hellhounds, stymphalian birds and even the three furies flying above them. He activated his eyes to read their auras. The two blondes weren't too strong of an aura. But the black-haired girl had a massive aura of electricity. The only god he could think of with lightning was Zeus. But according to his knowledge, he wasn't supposed to have a kid. Having all this knowledge instantly confused him but had get used to it. He could hear thunder rumbling above him. And he frowned as Zeus made no effort to even help in the slightest. And he glared daggers as he saw the people from the apparent demigod camp just staring and not helping. This is bullshit. How can they not try to help? He thinks angry, Shinju size Greeks are very hands off with parenting. They basically throw their kids to the wolves. The few times a Shinto god or goddess has a demigod child, we look after a kind and protect them when they cannot. We make sure they train and survive. They expect their kids to survive on their own with no help. Saddens me, he says with a frown. Naruto growls, well, screw that, I'm not letting these kids die. He says, making Shinju smile as he goes into his cloaked form and appears before the kids. They stare at him in shock. He looks at them, relax, kids. Just get to camp, I can take care of these nooses. He says forming his truth seeking orbs and creating the Shikujo. The beast step back from feeling the power in front of him. Will my truth seeking orbs be able to kill the monsters? He asks Shinju, he shrugs his shoulders might as well as try, if not use those blades my wife gave you, he says getting a nod from Naruto, 
He dashes with great speed and swings the Shikujo at a hellhound, sending it crashing into three others, killing them from the immense impact, he turns to the Furies above him. They were in range so he fired the orbs at them killing two, and the third fell from the sky. He dodges swings from the Cyclops and lunges from the other hounds. He kicks one heart in the face into the Cyclops, killing the hound and toppling over the huge monster. He sent more orbs out, killing the metal birds that flew around him. He held up a hand to catch a club strike and shattered it in his hands. A Amaterasu he calls out in his head, making one burst into black flames and them golden dust as the flame died down. He panted as he wasn't used to using his new eyes. Focus on using what you know kid, using your eyes will just tire you out Shinju points out. Naruto groans and fires three more orbs at a side Cyclops sending them straight through it, turning it to dust, he saw the last fury appear in the clearing, who are you lowly demigod? You are interfering with Lord Hades' work, that child must die, she says lashing out her whip, he catches it without missing a step or even being burned, why must she die? Because of the sins of her father? That is an idiotic reason and you know it's soul eve before I kill you, he says releasing a massive amount of Kai. The fury pauses in shock, this demigod stopped her whip and showed no signs of being hurt, not even the children of the forger could be immune of the flames of hell. She let out a whistle and called forth more beasts and smirked you can't defeat this many so just die she says making Naruto chuckle, who says I can't copy myself. He says putting his hands in the familiar cross form shadow clone, he says creating 100 of himself, all in cloaked form, he charges a Rasen shuriken and smirked, as the clone set out to destroy the others, I will not let her die for the sins of Zeus, die. He yells throwing the Rasen shuriken, the fury tries to dodge, but one of his clones hold her down, killing her in a massive explosion. He looks to see the other monsters all dead, he walks up the hill, going out of his cloaked form and turned off his eyes. Just as he saw the black-haired girl walk towards him with a smile, the clouds rumbled and a lightning bolt struck her, turning her to a tree, he stared in shock at the tree, did that seriously just happen, Zeus turned his daughter into a tree. He thinks in rage, Shinju himself was enraged as well kid, you need to use your human path and take her out, screw Zeus he yells in rage at the Greek's actions. Naruto nods, but an idea pops in his head do I really need to be here? And even if I take her out in front of everyone, Zeus will just imprison her again, I can leave a clone of her, so they are none the wiser, and use my aura to cover hers, he explains, getting a massive grin from Zetsu and Shinju, as Zetsu was linked to Naruto as well. Nice plan kid, do what he says getting agreement from Zetsu as well, he walks in the camp and glares at the centaur, why the hell did Zeus trap his own daughter? He yells flaring his kai, Chiron takes a step back look son, I fear it was his punishment for breaking the vow he says regretting it the moment after as the kai increased, his punishment was to kill his daughter that's fucked up. He yells covering the ears of the short crying blonde girl, Chiron frowns, who are you? He asks, my name is Naruto Atsutsuki, he says as a black symbol appears before him, it was of the Milky Way, and it was spinning in the symbol and Ima son of chaos, the primordial goddess of creation and the universe among other things he says glaring at the horse man. Tyron paled at what was before him, a son of the primordial mother to all that hadn't been seen in eons, the same boy who destroyed a massive army of beasts like it was nothing, the boy whose rage had caused numerous kids to pass out, he noticed the two blades at his side and the scroll on his back, he could feel great power from the blades, like they were God themselves. I'll look him sure Shes okay. Merely stuck in there he says backing away from the dark blue eyes that glared at him. You better hope Shes okay. Her him kicking Zeus ass he says as a lightning bolt fires down, only for him to catch it and crush it in his hands, shocking everyone around him, gonna have to try more than that asshole. He says as the clouds quickly dissipate. He turned back to Chiron so what cabin am I staying at? He says glaring at the man, he made sure not to let them know he was just going to take Thalia out, then leave to train the girl. Olympus. Zeus was not happy, not only had an unknown man yelled at him for his actions, but he turned out to be the son of Chaos, the primordial mother to Gia. The only reason he fired a bolt in the first place was he was tired of the ungrateful brat badmouthing him, but then something happened that shocked all the gods and goddesses in the room, he caught and crushed a bolt in his hands. Sends after a black vortex appeared before them and a woman with matcha skin and a long dark gown that seemed to have moving designs of stars and galaxies on it, she had long silver hair and pure black star eyes, Zeus, I just claimed my son, and you go and try and fire a bolt down on him. Do you want to be fated? She asks in a deadly tone making the god of the sky cower slightly. H he badmouth me, and I won't let that stand he says trying to muster a confident tone, only for an incredible pressure to crash down on him, shattering his throne like it was nothing, my son spoke his mind, something he has every right to when you idiotically trap your own daughter in a tree for no good reason other than Hades being sore, she says turning to the death god who was there only to make sure the punishment was dealt, controlling a prophecy never works, so this whole no kids from you three is idiotic and will only lead to more danger, which is why why I called out my son for help. He has been away for many years and you will do your best to leave him be or fade, she says as she let up on Zeus' pressure. Zeus glares at her, what right do you have to command me? 
he yells making all the others face palm. She was the creator of the universe and everything in it. She had every right. Chaos glares deadly at him and flicks her hand breaking every bone in his body and flicks it again to send him crashing through numerous columns. Zeus, you arrogant fool. I created this universe. I could take control from you all if I wanted to, but that would take my focus from my other worlds and the gods on there she says walking away. When he gets up and is healed, tell him I will be watching over my son and if he tries anything he will fade. Consequences be damned, she says as she walks through the portal again. They all let out a breath of relief and frown down at Zeus. Brother you truly are an idiot Poseidon says with a frown. Pam half blood later that night. Naruto watched over from the big house as he called stay anywhere else due to the whole not your parent. You don't get stay in the cabin crap. Being the son of chaos didn't mean anything apparently. He wasn't even allowed in Hermes cabin for some reason or another. He had met the three other kids he saved. The blonde male was Luke, son of Hermes. He could feel a lot of negative emotions rolling off him. But seeing your friend be trapped in a tree would do that to you. The other male was Grover the Satyr, the watcher over them all. He had succeeded in his job, but still felt terrible for what happened to Thalia, the apparent name of the child of Zeus. Then there was the daughter of Athena, Annabeth. She was a very curious girl as he was asked a million questions about his powers and horns. He only answered that he got them from his mother, nothing more. She was upset at the loss of her friend, but Naruto assured them Thalia was okay. When they asked how he knew he told them he was a sage and could feel her life force in the tree, satyrs and nymphs nearly jumped him, but he gave them a look saying not the time. He sighed as he leaned over the railing, curfew had been in effect an hour ago, but no harpies bothered him as his kai made a few lay eggs in fear or self-preservation, he didn't quite know. He left the house using his ninja skills and a clone stand-in, so no one knew he was here, perfect time to take her out, I can help you using the human path and safely extract her, body and all but we will have to create a blood clone using her energy as a battery for it shortly after, or the asshole king would notice he says as Naruto sneaks his way to the tree. Just because no one was out of their cabins didn't mean people won't be looking from there. He arrived at the tree and activated his Shinju eyes, he could feel Shinju making them spin as he created an empty blood clone and laid a hand on the tree, human path. He said mentally as he pulled the unconscious girl from the tree, he placed a hand on the clone and the girl, and used himself as pathway for her energy to flow through, transforming the clone into another version of herself that would dispel some time after being released. He eased the clone in the tree and picked up Thalia. She was in a deep sleep, he needed to get her away from camp so she could explain everything, hopefully he could be of help to the girl. Miles away from the camp, Naruto built a fire and set her down, as she was out cold, he decided it was time to look at what the clones grabbed, grandma said that she modified them a bit, he was curious about that. He unsealed the massive scroll he had been carrying and saw scrolls of numerous affinities and even some of secondary and tertiary elements. Having all the nations together made gathering them so much easier, and since he bore the Shinju's eyes, he could use literally every element as the Shinju bore all chakra. Then he smiled at the next scroll in line. It read unique swords and contained all seven swords of the swordsmen of the mist, as well as Orochimaru's sword and some other interesting swords he grabbed along the way. He unsealed them to notice they were now made of a bronze steel mix, that is so you can kill monsters and anyone who tries to attack you Shinju explains. Mill will have to thank grandma next time I see her he thinks with a smile. He unsealed some clothes and chose to change his attire, Zetsu spilled out and sat next to the scroll. He kept the cargo pants and sandals, but he chose a sleeveless orange muscle shirt and a long baggy sleeved kimono top that was black and closed it with an orange obi. The sleeves were baggy, but didn't get in his way, Zetsu smiled and went back into his sleeve, thank you, much better he says before closing his eyes, Naruto smiles and seals back up the clothes. He also found scrolls on the Sharingan and Rinnegan abilities, as well as Kenjutsu stances, those were bound to be very useful. He also noticed a wolf summoning contract, as well as numerous other animals. Shinju must have done that. I did, with my eyes you can bear multiple contracts, and since those damn toads abandoned you since Kano have betrayed you, and they cold fight against the village with you, I thought you should have a new contract, so you can continue to channel nature chakra, as you can only do that with a summoning contract for it to flow through, he explains, bringing up a sore point for him. He sighed and would sign them later, he didn't feel like speaking to summons, maybe had signed the copy of the slug one first, so he could speak to Tsunade easier. He sealed everything up and sent a clone out to hunt as he overlooked the girl. He didn't want any beast attacking Thalia with only a clone left behind. The clone ran off as he stared up at the moon above Shinju is your body in this moon as well. He asks, Shinju opens an eye and looks through Naruto's eyes yes, my body follows my spirit wherever it goes, eventually I will leave your body once you become a god, then I will remove my body from the moon he explains, he was going to say more, but Thalia started to stir, her eyes fluttered open, and once she saw him she jumped back in shock, what am I doing here? 
Last I saw lightning hit me she says with a frown. Naruto sighs yes you were hit by your father. Don't say his name or else he will find us. He was punished for having you. And his punishment was to trap you in a tree he says. Shocking the girl hard. But she frowned and held back tears. Naruto hugged the girl as she cried into his chest relaxed Thalia. I've decided to train you and take you away from that backwards camp. Just standing there as you all fraught for your lives is stupid. He says making her look up at him. You're going to train me. She asks excited, he nods of course, and if you show promise I can give you a powerful gift and some powerful blades he says getting stars in her eyes. He smiled and let out a chuckle first thing you have to answer a question he says getting her attention as a serious look gets on her face, why do you fight? He asks in a wise tone. She thinks for a second then smiles warmly. I fight to protect those close to me and make it so no one has to lose another person close to them she says getting a massive grin from Naruto. Great. You pass. Now while we train if you show great skill I can give you something maybe he says rubbing the back of his neck. Relax kid you can give others chakra with your sun mark. As long as they have pure hearts and minds like this girl it'll be fine. Shinju says easing his worry. He turns to see his clone returning with rabbits as it starts to cook the food. After dinner we can start. I won't be an easy teacher. But I won't be brutal. I will push you to your max skill and make you exceed it, he says in a calm tone. Thalia nods I understand. I won't disappoint she says smiling with a look that reminded him of himself when he was a genin. He was definitely looking forward to this. Chapter end. Woot. I love how I started this story rewrite. Major changes and reasoning. Naruto's age. I don't like writing young Naruto. Difficult to write as I like a more toned down Naruto. His parentage lineage. Having him the grandson of a Shinto goddess and primordial. Shinju has a human form. Made him more connected and powerful. How he formed the Juubi. I made it more accidental. But I made him accept it. He will still miss Kurama. But he understands that Shinju shouldn't have been separated. The pairing. It will not be a harem. One girl to be decided. I am not skilled at writing harems. And they just feel weird for me to write. Also I made the Shintos the head of heaven. Where all the pantheons can connect and meet up. And ask for help from others if they needed. They needed a leader and voted for the Shintos to keep order. Amaterasu is the head leader. Along with Susano and Tsukiyomi. Who she isn't fond of. Kept original Shintos. In the original story people kept bugging me on who I made gods. And it got out of hand. If you want description of the blades go to my profile. Tenno Kuroi Hono is my creation. And the links on my profile show the sheath, the guard and the color of the blade. Yamato is from Devil May Cry. I know it's dark forged, but I changed it to light element. Also if anyone complains about the Juubi being a wolf I swear I will smack them. Naruto set his clone to work and unsealed some smaller clothes for the punk dressed girl. She was annoyed at his lack of leather, but she got over it quickly as she found some clothes she called baddest. She decided on a black trench coat with tight black jeans and a sleeveless gray shirt. He sealed her old clothes away as no use just leaving them behind. Who are you by the way? You never told me your name as I was zapped into a tree before the greeting to the camp she said with a frown as she had been curious about it since he never introduced himself. He chuckled as he rubbed the back of his neck sheepishly, a bit embarrassed that he hadn't introduced himself yet. My name is Naruto Atsutsuki, sorry about not introducing myself sooner. Things were a bit hectic he said, flashing her his foxy grin as he chuckled. Weird name, woe's your godly parent. She asked with a frown, incredibly curious as the blonde had abilities she had never seen with those weird orbs and cloning ability. Naruto frowned as he stroked his chin, thinking over if he should tell her his true heritage, consider he would be training her for the foreseeable future, and wanted the girl to trust him. If she found out by someone else or by himself later on, she might feel betrayed and ruin the teacher-student relationship. Thus do a kid, you can make her swear on that river sticks to keep it safe from others, knowing Shinju chimed in as he had nothing real else to do inside Naruto. But he didn't mind, in his elder years he has become quite lazy. I will tell you as long as you swear on the river sticks to never mention it without my permission, he said as he smiled and looked towards Thalia, making the girl look even more confused. Why would I need to swear on sticks just to know his godly parent? She thought, but then she remembered how he had Zeus angry at him. Fine I swear on the river sticks not to tell anyone she said as she sat on the log and looking towards the blonde, waiting for him to continue. You see I am not from this pantheon. I am the grandchild of the goddess Amaterasu the Shinto goddess and the only Shinto primordial Shinju, as well as the son of Kagaya the rabbit goddess he said with a smile, shocking the punk girl. She had heard that the Shintos were powerful beings but incredibly peaceful. She heard from Grover and Annabeth that her father had fought them long ago and lost badly, so seeing a child of three strong beings surprised her. My grandma sent me here to help this pantheon under the guise of the son of chaos he said, making her even more shocked only to shake it off, as if she kept getting surprised at everything it was going to be tiring. So when does training start? 
she asked, moving on from the surprise and already excited to be trained by someone so strong. Most likely in the morning as you have been through a lot today, he said as the clone finished up cooking the rabbits now eat up Thalia, you need the energy he added as he unsealed the summon scrolls again. He knew he needed a contract to use sage mode, and he was going to think about it, but he needed to ability to sense energy better than he already did, he looked them over to see wolves, slugs, hawks and foxes, those were the only ones that act. He grabbed the slug one and signed that one first since he knew most about the slugs, and it would allow him to contact Sunate. As Thalia 80 summoned a divided part of Katsaya, the small white and blue slug looked at him with what he swore was a smile on her face. Naruto, Tsunade Sama told us all what happened. The other summons are deeply disappointed in the toads and the villages. I am glad Tsunade Sama can still summon us. On behalf of the slugs we accept you are our summoner, and since we are the first you have signed nature chakra will channel though us. It is the same way as the toads except your markings will change she explained, as most likely Tsunade had already filled her in, as her calm caring tone made him smile. Thank you Lady Katsaya. I will bear being your sage with honor he said with a smile, making the slug giggle before dispelling. Kitsaya had always been such a kind and caring summon, something he noticed from the few times he saw her, and he knew she could be devastating. He figured head signed the other contracts later, as he needed to see how long it took to obtain sage mode in this new world. He cold and helped but chuckle as he saw Thalia gaping in shock from him summoning a creature that could talk, he'll explain it to you later, as right now I need to do something important, he said as he sat in his meditative stance. The second he started he felt something Thing that upset him. Nature energy was very low and difficult to draw. He remembered that this realm had expanded in a larger scale than his old world had so drawing nature energy would be more difficult. As he felt him enter sage mode he stood up and walked over to the lake that was nearby to them. He'll explain everything just give me a second he said as he looked at himself on the reflection of the lake. He now had two light blue markings going from under his eyes down to his jawline. They were roughly an inch thick and wavy like the markings on Katsaya. He also had blue pigmentation on his eyelids, like when back with the toads. He noticed his eyes were very different, they had pale blue very large pupils with a thin yellow iris around the pupils. Must be what slug eyes look like he thought to himself as he turned back to Thalia and smiled and sat down, so what's your first question? He asked staying in sage mode, so he could continue to be able to sense. How did you bring that slug here and then make it disappear? She asked as she had many more but might as well start at the beginning. That is called the summoning jutsu. By signing a contract with blood you become able to summon animals of that contract to aid you in battle. You can only sign one, but indifferent as I can sign multiple. The first one I summoned was the slug contract he said, showing her the contracts. Can I sign one? She asked and he nodded. Yes you can later, but as you do not have chakra it would be pointless he explained making her grumble. What's with the markings and weird eyes? she asked weirded out by his eyes a bit. Naruto chuckled as he rolled his eyes slightly. No one ever gets used to the eye party thought as he held out a hand, allowing numerous birds land on it. The marking and eyes are a sign that I am one with nature. This is sage mode. By drawing in nature energy and channel through myself, I can wield nature's energy, and it will increase my normal strength to insane levels. It also makes me empathic and increases my technique strength, he said, petting the blue jay that landed on his horn. The satyrs and dryads would just love you, she said, making Naruto laugh. After you were trapped in the tree I used used my bare sensor abilities to read if you were alive in the tree, they had asked me how and I told them I was a sage, and they nearly jumped me he said, making her giggle before it faltered and she frowned, wait are my friends allowed to know him alive? She asked as Naruto frowned and shook his head. If they were to know right now your father would get wind and trap you away in the tree again or possibly worse he said as he didn't know how the paranoid king would react, so they all think him trapped. She asked as Naruto nodded solemnly. It is to keep you and them safe for now. You can always rejoin them after your clone I put in the tree gets removed. He said as he didn't think it will be any time soon considering it just happened. He widened his eyes as he quickly stood up, feeling an energy source coming towards them, while he drew his katanas and readied himself. One Sumato was out wisps of golden light rolled off it, while ten no Kuroi Hono had wisps of black flames. Yamato's blade was pure silver, while ten no Kuroi Hono had a blood red color to it. He didn't know how to use then but he had used too much of his new cloaked form, and he wasn't fully used to using Shinja's potent chakra just yet. Don't worry kid as long as you don't try to use their abilities you will be fine, but watch out this energy signature is that of a god or goddess Shinju explained, making Naruto worry a bit more. It didn't take long as seconds later a woman appeared before him, she had long blonde hair with what looked to be wheat weaved into it, while she wore a tan toga, and had a kind look on her face, but he was still on guard. Relax son of chaos I mean you and the child of my brother no harm, she said with a kind smile I am demonstrating goddess of agriculture and some of nature, I only came as I felt someone access nature, and it piqued my interest she said, making Naruto sheath the swords, I will tell you as long as you swear on the river sticks not to reveal Thalia being free, he said before she quickly swore to his terms, I can access nature as I am a sage, I didn't know it brought attention to me, what other gods or goddess did I notify? 
He asked slightly worried of blowing their cover. I would be the only one who could feel it, maybe Artemis, but she couldn't care less as she is focused on hating men. Demeter explained as she smiled and waved it off putting him at ease. I wish you two good luck, I personally voted against turning Thalia into a tree, but I was outvoted as only Poseidon, Hermes and Athena voted against it, she said with a frown. Thank you for trying but do not worry I will keep her safe, he said in a serious tone as he slightly bowed his head to her. Demeter smiled, thankful for his respect before she snapped her fingers. I gave you both permission to grow crops at any time as you can't survive on hunting alone, and I can tell you have to power to grow things she said with a smirk before she flashed away. Thalia let out a breath of relief as she was happy the goddess wouldn't say anything to her father, before Naruto went to the scroll and unsealed bedding for the both of them. Get some sleep Thalia, you will need it for tomorrow, I will go to bed in a while, as I need to do some well-needed tasks he explained, getting a yawn from the girl, as she took off her trench coat and laid down for bed. Once she was out he unsealed the elemental scrolls, he would work on his eyes later, but first he wanted to expand his arsenal. He had been a one-trick pony for too long, and he needed more skills. He created 600 clones easily divide into six groups of 100. Each group will one element, and the final 100 get to work on Mokuten, as we need to be able to create crops to eat, he ordered as they saluted and headed off. After they went off he took out some Kinjutsu scrolls, and under the tutelage of Shinju, got to work on learning how to wield two swords in battle. Next morning, Ailey awoke to the sound of cooking and the scent of what smelled of french fries or something along those lines. She opened her eyes to see multiple Naruto's cooking multiple dishes, using what seemed to be flowing metal which a closer inspection turned out to metal sand. Morning Thalia don't worry boss will wake up soon the Naruto she figured to be a clone said motioning towards the bedding next to hers as she saw Naruto snoring underneath. You can control the elements as well. She asked with a confused frown as her hand was hid away before she could steal any food. Yeah, fire, water, earth, wind and lightning as well other mixtures as you can see behind us he said, pointing to the clones that were drawing up crops and trees like they were nothing. Wow you are powerful she said clearly impressed. Only recently, I used to be dead last in my class and was until I finally got serious with training, he said with a shrug of his shoulders. Why must grandma shine so brightly? The real Naruto groaned as he got out of bed wearing only pajama pants and a sleeveless muscle shirt. I think Apollo controls the sun in this realm, one clone said, making him dispel the clone muttering something about how why all of his clones had to have his smart mouth. So what are we going to start on first? She asked with a giggle as a clone plated food and gave it to her. We start with combat training and then eventually we will start on chakra he said, getting the young girl excited as he started to eat some of the food, but first where is Zetsu? He asked putting on his kimono top while Thalia was confused. Over here Naruto Thalia heard a voice call out and turned towards it and promptly screamed. The thing was a black blob with sharp teeth and glowing eyes. The blob seemed to frown as it slithered over to Naruto and went up his sleeve. Naruto chuckled as he turned the sleeve towards her so the thing could frown at her. Was the scream necessary? I know I am different looking than everyone but I'm not that scary Zetsu said in an upset tone. Oh relax Zetsu can you think of anyone who wouldn't freak out after seeing you the first time? He asked making Zetsu grumble. Thalia meet my brother? He says the last part confused but Zetsu just shrugs, making his sleeve ruffle. He was created by my mom, has part parasite, part plant and some other confusing stuff he said chuckling. If he had his original body he could move on his own, but I think it got destroyed, so it'd have to grow one, and it isn't very inconspicuous he said as Thalia nodded confusedly. So let me get dressed and go with a clone to the training area okay? He said as she nodded and finished up her breakfast before running off. Naruto smiled as he watched her run off while he went to change. He unsealed some clothes, deciding to change things up. He put on a black kimono clothes with an orange obi with orange hakama pants. His swords were strapped to his waist, both on his left side. He also sealed away his headband, as he really didn't feel like wearing it. He walked to the area to see Thalia wielding her spear and shield. While she was bouncing on her feet in excitement, he chuckled and held her head to calm her down. So what are we going to do first? She asked as she knocked his hand away off of her head. Naruto chuckled as he drew out Yamato, not wanting to accidentally burn her as he decided to get a test of her skills. Come at me with the intent to kill. I need to see your skills, so I know where to start before I give you the weapon I have in mind for you he said inspecting Yamato and wielding the sheath in his left hand. Aelia frowned before he chuckled and waved her off, don't worry you aren't going to kill me, I just need to see you unbound he said, getting a nod from the punk girl. He watched as she took a deep breath and dashed at him with a spear thrust, he easily dodged it, only to jump over a shield bash she did as she spun on her heel. She tried to thrust her spear at him again as he was in midair, only for him to block it by bashing it down with a sheath and spun around striking her shield with the blade hard, sending her skidding back. She got back up quickly, only to have to immediately dodge a swing from Naruto with his sheath. She ducked under a slash and stabbed upwards in an attempt to hit him, 
but he dodged it by tilting his head to the side, he quickly kicked her shield with a fraction of his super strength and sent her tumbling backwards into a tree. She raised her head to feel his blade at her throat before he slid it back in the sheath and tied it back onto his left side. You did very good Thalia, better than I expected though a spear is quite unnatural for you, he said as he helped her up with a smile. How is it unnatural? I fight pretty well with it she said upset with a frown before he ruffled her hair and smiled down at her. Now do not get angry at me as I do not mean it offensively, but you are a girl he said confusing and slightly pissing her off, females are much more graceful, no pun intended you have more flexibility and can almost dance in battle, males are very stiff and rigid, the only reason I'm not is that I was trained heavily by a clan that taught me a lot. Also a spear is a rigid weapon, well yes you have skill with it, but it doesn't suit your potential he said, making her understand and calm down, the lack of static electricity was a sign of it easily. Well then what am I supposed to use? My father gave me these, it's the only thing Hess ever given me she said as she looked up at him, making Naruto frown. He sighed as he crouched down to her level and looked her in the eye, Thalia, well yes your father gave you these, but isn't this a replica of Aegis, Athena's shield? And the spear a replica of the spear Hera gave to her daughter long ago. He asked making Thalia notice and frown. He basically gave me these copies, nothing really original. She asked confused as he nodded. Your father is a lazy man, I'm sorry, but it's true. I have no respect for the man who turned his own daughter into a tree, it is very backwards, but that is why I saved you, I don't want you to grow up in that backwards camp or being stuck due to your idiotic father he said making her smile, now how about I give you something more suited for you, something that with adequate training you could give me a run for my money he said, exciting the 12 year old girl who was almost bouncing on her feet, he chuckled as he unrolled the scroll until he got to the weapon section and unsealed a scroll that read seven swords of the mist on it, he smiled as he unsealed two blades slightly shorter than his, they had no sheath and she could easily see why as two fang like protrusions protrusions poked out from each blade, one near the top on one side and a lower one on the opposite side, they had golden handles and blue cloth wrapped around them, he smiled as he twirled the blades around in his hands after he sealed everything else back up, he turned to Thalia and pointed the blades towards her, not an offense, to show her, these Thalia are the Kiba blades, the twin lightning fangs he said as he made lightning course through the blades with a smirk, Thalia smiled and bounced excitedly at the sight while he smiled, but then got a serious look on his face that calmed her down as well, now listen here Thalia you will have to to earn these blades, I am letting you use these, if I feel you are misusing them, I will take them back he said, making the girl frown but nod reluctantly, all she could think about was becoming stronger and more power, and just as she finished that thought Naruto bopped her on the head, at those power hungry thoughts out of your head Thalia he said, making the girl grumble, upset that she let her fatal flaw flare up, don't worry it'll beat that fatal flaw out of you over the course of time he said with a chuckle, making Thalia smile until she noticed something, wait if you are from a different pantheon how do you know so much about the gods and the heroes? stuff. She asked confused as it was a bit odd. Ah I finally noticed that, well when my grandmother sent me over she gave me full knowledge on this realm and its history, she felt sending me in here blind would be idiotic, he said as Thalia accepted the answer before he handed her the blades. Now you should be able to send your natural lightning through it, but it won't make the sword sharper, just more like lightning. When I give you chakra we can work with sending it through the blades he explained, exciting the girl once more. Now I am assigning a clone to you to help teach you the stances with that blade, follow them, and only move on once you believe you have gotten it memorized, do not rush, since we have more than enough time as this is only the first day of training he said, getting a serious look from the girl, what about you? What are you going to do? She asked curious as he smiled. Well I am going to practice my jutsus that I've been learning currently, and I don't want to harm you if I accidentally do it wrong he explained as she nodded while she headed off with a clone. Do you think it is wise to give her power Naruto? As you stated her fatal flaw from what I can see is her thirst for power, Zetsu said with a frown as Naruto sighed. I know but I believe I can teach her what Haku taught me long ago, that you truly become most powerful when you protect your precious ones, I believe in her and trust her, she can overcome that flaw he said as he walked off into the forest. Well I am going to keep watch, best not to leave her with a clone, Zetsu said as he slithers out and back towards Thalia, while Naruto shrugged his shoulders. Okay, be good and don't scare her he yelled out with a chuckle, making Zetsu grumble. As he got to the clearing he opened up the jutsu scrolls the clones had unsealed for him, he created the same number as last time, but this time he added another 100, same as last night, but I want 100 of you to work on chakra control, we need to keep our control over it, since having Shinju inside us our reserves are growing more and more so he explained getting nods from all as they went off to work, once you get your control a tad bit better we can work on the eyes of mine, Shinju said getting a nod from Naruto, also as a review from last night, I found you rent suitable for wielding two katanas at a time, you are better at using one at a 
the time with a sheath or a chakra rod as a guard, wielding two will not benefit you, he explained, while Naruto had to agree as he knew he wasn't nearly as flexible, sure he could do the stances and everything, but when he actually fought with them last night it felt weird, and he wasn't nearly as natural at it as he expected Thalia to be, we will be going through the stances again, and you will fight me again, Shinju explained as he made Naruto create a shadow clone for him to possess, the clone's hair becomes long and dark grey, its eyes turned into the Shinju eyes he used in his cloaked form and the fingernails elongated into claws. Osmi Yamato as today you will practice with ten, no Kuroi Hono Shinju said as he stretched his limbs, while Naruto unstrapped Yamato and tossed it, only for him to easily catch it and draw it making the light wisps turn silver. Naruto frowned as he drew Tenno, and abbreviation of ten no Kuroi Hono as that is a lot to type every time I refer to it, and held the sheath in his left hand in a reverse grip. Shinju instructed him for an hour or so until he decided it was time to test him again. Naruto's goal was to land a cut on the clone, but considering the clone had absolute vision and instincts greater than his, so it mostly would focus on guarding. Now today I will be only guarding as you need offensive trained as opposed to defensive training, Shinju explained as he held Yamato in his right hand, with a sheath tied to his waist, while Naruto nodded and burst off, striking with the sheath. Shinju easily blocked in and flicked the blade away as Naruto tried to slice at his abdomen as Naruto smirked and tossed the sheath up, momentarily distracting Shinju as he tried to slice him across the chest. Shinju went to block only to smirk as mid-slice, right before Naruto's blade met Yamato Naruto dropped the blade and caught it in his left hand in a reverse grip and slashed lower than his guard was, he quickly evaded, but he noticed the cut on the clone's Hakama pants. Man. I got the idea from Katekyo Hitman Reborn, Yamamoto's fifth offensive stance of Shigure Son Ryu, named Samadur or Early Summer Rain, PS I do not own Katekyo Hitman Reborn either. Very ingenious tactic, but avoid using it when you are using the sheath, as you don't want to have to throw it up every time, he said with a smile as Naruto caught the sheath. Sorry I just wanted to try something, but it worked somewhat, caught you off guard didn't it? He asked with a smirk as he dashed towards him. Shinju blocks every strike easily, but found that Naruto was progressing nicely before they decided to stop once Thalia's clone dispelled. Shinju went back inside the seal and tossed him Yamato which he strapped to his left side again as he put Tenno on the same side. Since he was only using one blade at a time he wasn't sure why he should keep them on separate sides. He smiled as he walked over to see an exhausted Thalia who was smiling brightly at him. How'd I do? she asked a bit nervous about how she did. Tell the girl she did great for a beginner, she is showing a tremendous amount of skill and talent, Shinju said impressed at her level. Naruto smiled and relayed the message making the girl cheer in joy as she almost fell but was caught by him while he chuckled, let's go get some lunch, and we can continue more after, this time I will be with you myself watching as my clones are bound to dispel their progress at the Jutsus, and most likely give me feedback he said as he she nodded while he helped her get back to their campsite. The clones once again cooked for them as they decided to talk about themselves. He wanted to give her the Kakashi treatment of questions, since she was going to be his student. So tell me Thalia, what are some of your likes and dislikes? Dreams for the future and whatnot he said with a kind smile. Thalia frowned a bit as she didn't want to bring up her past, but decided to do it, since he revealed his true heritage to her. Will I like Green Day and the color black, as well as my brother she said with a frown before continuing, I don't like people who judge before meeting people, people who think they are better than everyone else, and height she said the last part shyly. My dream is to train hard so I can eventually show my dad how much of an asshole he is she finished up, and Naruto laughed with a proud nod. Very well put, will I like Raymond, orange, my mother and family and a few friends back home, I dislike the team, the villagers, and also when people judge people before meeting them, as for a dream, it's more or less helping things here, so I can relax he said as the food arrived. After lunch, Naruto smiled as he sat under a tree with Zetsu, who had returned during lunch without him noticing while they watched as Thalia went through the stances of the style that went best with the Kiba blades. She was doing great and seemed to have the flow of it, only messing up a few times, but caught on quickly and fixed it, she wasn't a master by any means, but she had a great understanding of the basics, and he could see her becoming strong strong with those blades. He could feel the influx of memories from the clone's training. He was making good progress with the elements, though wind was still easiest. His control was going great, and he was getting to a point where he could use Tsunade's strength easier. Soon he'd have to start working on the Sharingan and Rinnegan abilities, and tapping into his sword's abilities as well. He smiled as Thalia finished with a nervous look on her face. You are doing great Thalia, Yao become a great warrior quickly he said, making her smile and jump in excitement. She may be serious and focused at times, but I keep forgetting she is a 12-year-old girl he thought to himself with a smirk as she was a sweet little girl. So when do you think she can receive chakra? He asked Shinju as he wanted his permission before gifting it to anybody seeing that it was his gift. Give her a week or two, maybe a month. I want to try and dial down that fatal flaw of hers. Before giving her chakra Shinju said getting a nod of agreement from Naruto. So how goes your training with the clones? 
she asked as he had filled her in on the clone's memory relay while they were eating. Good, but my head is starting to hurt now he said with a chuckle as he rubbed his head. Well that just means your training is working she said before they both heard a massive beast roar, and Naruto jumped to his feet and releasing Zetsu. Stay with Thalia, from what my clones have seen it's the Nemean lioness he said, getting a nod from Zetsu and a frown from Thalia. But I can help. She yelled as Naruto looked at her with a frown. This is a beast with impenetrable fur. Even I will have difficulties with it he said looking her dead in the eye. Stay here or Zetsu will make you he said making her pout and cross her arms before he looked towards Zetsu who nodded, understanding him. Naruto dashed off, quickly arriving where his clones had been dispelled to see the beast sniffing around until its eyes land on him and it roared again. He quickly summoned a Shikujo and took a deep breath while he eased into his cloak mode and summoned his truth-seeking orbs. They won't work on the beast as its fur at one of the strongest defenses in this realm, Shinju told him, as Naruto changed the orbs into plates to help defend him, while he dashes towards the beast. He quickly had to duck under a slash from its paw, before he hit under its chin hard with a shikujo. The beast recoiled and went to pounce only to hit the plates that defended him. Naruto noticed whenever it roared he could see that its mouth seemed fleshy and not durable like the fur. He sent a few orbs towards it to distract it as he changed three into thin drills and make them spin fast, infusing wind chakra into them. He waited for it to roar again, and the second it did he fired the drills off like bullets. He smiled as they went straight through the roof of its mouth, and the lioness recoiled in pain as the drills went all the way through its snout. I need some way to finish this beast off, maybe kill it from the inside he thought with a smirk as an idea sprung up in his head that could work. Quickly he started to run his hands through the hand signs, before slammed them down to pull out a seed the size of his fist. He coated it in a truth-seeking orb and dashed towards it as it roared. Just as its mouth fully opened, he quickly fired it into its mouth and erased the orb as he put his hands in the tiger seal. Wood style. Springtime ensnarement. He yelled as wooden tendrils burst from the lioness and made it burst into golden dust. All that is left behind was a cherry blossom tree and a golden furred trench coat that reminded him of his father's coat. He picked it up and sealed it away, frowning at the cherry blossom tree. It wasn't that he hated them, but now they brought up bad memories of Sakura. He sighed as he walked back back to Thalia to see her still pouting. Look Thalia, I'm sorry for leaving you behind I just didn't want you to get hurt as yes you are getting skilled, but a sword is little to no use, it can't be cut, and is most likely immune to any and all outside elements he said, making her sigh. Fine, next time something attacks camp you can help he said tossing the cloak at her. Wear that instead of the black coat, it'd rather you have an impenetrable coat, so I have to worry less when I'm not near he said, making her smile as he ruffled her hair. Thanks Naruto she said as she put it on and twirled around. Wait how did you kill it? She asked curious as to how exactly he killed the Nemean lioness, a powerful monster. He chuckled and rubbed the back of his neck in embarrassment. Well I kinda made a tree bust from inside it and shatter it from the inside out. It was very difficult to do as I had to make Chakra penetrate its cloak which was quite thick he said, making her jaw drop. He basically exploded it. She thought to herself as she shook her head, geez let's hope Peta doesn't find out she said with a giggle as Naruto chuckled and nodded. Come on let's rest for a bit before dinner, he said as they walked back, but not before he let Zetsu back in his sleeve. As they get back at the camp he summoned more clones to start on dinner as they sat down. I think we should get moving to another forest or something as the Nemean lioness has bound to get the god's attention he said, making her frown. We have no way of getting around though, unless you have a motorcycle or car sealed away in there she said, making him stroke his chin in thought. I could always sign the hawk contract, but flying would get the asshole's attention, maybe the wolves or foxes could work. He thought out loud as he unsealed the contracts. Go for wolves first or else they might get angry, foxes and hawks are laid back, but it should be fine if you show them my eyes Shinju pointed out making Naruto unroll the wolf one and sign it. Okay Thalia keep the code on as I summon the wolves he said, getting a nod from her as she pulled it close, he ran through the seals and slammed his hands down with his eyes active, summoning Jutsu. Wolf contract he yelled out as he summoned a wolf roughly the size of a horse. Who dares summon the wolf clan with another contract signed it said staring at Naruto until he noticed his eyes and jumped back, L Lord S Shinju. It asked in a worried tone as Naruto nodded. Yes he is inside me and my grandfather, I have use of his eyes, and he allows me to have multiple contracts as he is the primordial of all beasts he said, making the wolf nod and huff. Fine I will inform the clan though some will be upset you didn't sign us first, it said before it dispelled, and he turned back to Thalia. Well I think that went better than I expected since I was honestly expecting him to attack he said as Thalia nodded, we can leave tomorrow morning, he'll have clones pack up once we are done here in the morning, okay. He asked getting a nod in return. Naruto and Thalia enjoyed their dinner before she went to bed a bit after, he sighed as he stared up at the sky before he smiled. Ever since he escaped thing have been a little hectic but in a good way, 
better than being locked up and be in a place that everyone except for a very select few hated him. He just hoped he could keep Thalia safe. She didn't deserve this crap just because of who her father was. Then he thought back to what Demeter said. Only Poseidon, Athena and Hermes voted to save her besides Demeter. It'll have to be careful when traveling or else we might run across others who didn't vote to save her. And they would most likely report it to the asshole. And I really don't want to get into a fight with that man he thought with a frown as he looked down to Thalia. He felt a weird feeling like he needed to make sure she was happy at all costs. That's a parental instinct and it's sweet of you. I could feel negative emotions rolling off her when you brought up the past. She most likely has had a not so great childhood. The fact you are trying to make up for it is very kind of you, Shinju said with a smile as Naruto chuckled. So I'm like a dad to her I can deal with it he thought with a smile as he summoned two clones to watch over them. Next morning, Naruto woke up early so he could get everything fixed in the clearing, fixing the ground to hide any electrical burns on the ground. Call him over cautious but he didn't care. He waited a bit before woke Thalia up who was groggy while she glared at him. Relax Thalia you can try and sleep on the wolf he said, as the clone sealed everything into the scroll and Thalia's blades into a personal scroll for her to carry around, since they don't have sheath's head, rather than be sealed up. They traveled down the road until Naruto felt a presence behind them. He unsheathed Yamato and pointed it at the neck of the one behind him and moved Thalia behind him. Even as she had the pelt on he wanted to make Make sure she was safe. The man had sandy blonde hair and blue eyes, he wore a business suit and had a cell phone with a caduceus as the antenna. Relax man I mean you no harm, he said as the snakes move on the caduceus. Hermes, what are you doing here and how did you find us? He asked as he kept the blade to the god's neck. Hermes sighed as he pointed to the road. In the patron saints of travelers and roadways, I felt your presences the second you set foot on the road. Do not worry though I swear on sticks not to reveal you to Zeus or any other god he said, making Naruto quickly sheath the blade. So what do you want? Naruto asked as Thalia poked her head out from behind him, while Hermes smiled and straightened his suit. I came here to help, I can feel Demeter's blessing as she most likely helped you with food. I just want to give you safety while traveling and on the roads he said, holding up a hand and snapped his fingers. It will also hide your presence more from other gods and goddess, as long as you don't directly enter their domains. Like the sea for Poseidon or a fancy clothes store for Aphrodite he said chuckling at the jab at Aphrodite. Thank you Hermes and thank you for voting to keep Thalia safe, tell the others who voted to save her her she is under my protection, but make them swear not to reveal anything beforehand he said, getting a smile and nod from Hermes. If you all ever need anything give me a call, Hermes said as he handed him a business card before flashing away. It's okay, no god or goddess will take you away he said with a smile, as he calmed the nervous girl while she nodded and held his arm as they walked. They eventually get to a point where it's safe to summon where she begrudgingly let go of his arm, as he summons the wolf the size of a horse, this one had pure white fur and violet eyes. The wolf turns to him and looks at him dead in the eyes before he flashes the Shinja's eyes making her nod, my name is Junsuina, what may I do you for young ones? The wolf asked in a female tone as he bowed to her. I need travel as I need to get as far away from here as possible. I would like if we could go southwest he said as he showed her a map and traced his finger along until he got to Oregon. Junsuina thought for a second before she nodded with a hum, I will allow you to ride me, but do not make it a common occurrence she said as Naruto nodded. Of course not we are just in a hurry he said as they got atop the wolf, Thalia sitting behind him and holding on as he used chakra to stick to the wolf. I am one of the fastest in the clan, I can get you to this Oregon place you showed me in a few hours time she said as she dashed off. Thalia held on tight as the wolf ran, none of the cars or people noticed as a massive wolf ran ran through the road. The mist was a powerful thing and a powerful illusion. It made him wonder if maybe he should teach Thalia to manipulate it, as apparently his grandmother left him scrolls on how to do it. It would help hide her from beasts and keep mortals from being in the crosshairs. Two hours later they arrived in the forests of Oregon, and as they got off Naruto bowed to Junsuina, thank you greatly, and do not worry, this was indeed a one-time thing he said getting a nod. Thank you for that, until next time summoner she said before dispelling. He wanted this done quickly as he summoned five clones to unpack everything and another to use Henge to go to town and gather some clothes and other essentials. Maybe buy some food with some money he had gotten from his grandmother. He smiled as he turned to Thalia and unsealed her blades for her. Go and train some as I start making breakfast, he said, getting a nod as she left with one of his clones again. Well, he went to hunt and left Zetsu with his clone. He summoned his truth-seeking orbs and turned them to arrows. Manipulating the orbs was easy. Making them go far away from him was more difficult. He sat on a branch and waited silently for an animal to cross his path. It didn't take long as just as a deer arrive, he fired the arrow into the heart of the deer, just as a silver arrow hit it seconds later, he dashed to his kill and took out the silver arrow, 
keeping the orb turned arrow inside. He frowned as he saw three girls in similar gear, silver and green hunting outfits, hunters of Artemis. He groaned mentally. Why did he have to run into the man-haters he thought as they drew their bows? Get away from our kill male one said. She had olive-colored skin and pitch black hair with ocean-colored eyes. Her outfit was different from the others, as she had a silver circlet on her head. I hit the target first, meaning the kill is mine he said, pointing to the arrow he had inside. There is no way you shot it first one girl said glaring at him as he sighed. Well too bad it is my kill he said as he drew the arrow out and turned it back into an orb confusing the group greatly. My name is Naruto Atsutsuki, son of chaos, this is my kill. I used my arrow to kill it, he said, already annoyed at these girls' attitudes, as the two drew their knives, until the main girl stopped them. As much as I would love to castrate a male sadly he is right, she said before getting a smirk, but I have a feeling he will give it to us, she said as Naruto raised an eyebrow in confusion. And why would that be? He asked before dodging a volley of arrows, catching them all in his hands. Because I am here foolish boy he heard a female voice call out before he turned to see Artemis with her bow drawn. Really? You are going to fight me over a stupid kill of a deer. This is ridiculous he said as he groaned and tossed the caught arrows down on the ground. Artemis glared at him, him already feeling her trying to turn him into an animal to no effect, which seemed to piss her off. Yes, as my lieutenant was on the trail of the beast first, and you stole the kill she said, drawing back the arrow and taking sight. Oh for Kama's sake, just fucking take it, too much trouble to go against the annoying man-hater squad he said as he walked away. You dare speak of to me like that you dirty male. She yelled firing the arrow at the speed of a bullet, only for him to catch the arrow easily without even looking. Leave me alone or you will regret it he said as he broke the arrow and summoned the Shinja's eyes. Artemis glared and dashes for him only for him to block her strikes with Yamato and use the same technique he created in his spar against Shinju that he named it Hidden Vine. Artemis never saw it coming as she was shot backwards crashing through multiple trees, as even though he hit her with the back of the blade she did at most she have a few broken bones. He sighed as he turned to the others as they stared in shock, just leave, this is getting too annoying he said in a bored tone as he kept Yamato out in case Artemis got up, which was a good choice, as seconds later he dodged Artemis as she appeared behind him. Naruto weaved around her and hit her with the hilt of the sword on the back on the neck, knocking her out again, while well, he tossed her to the lieutenant apparently just leave me be he said as he disappeared in a burst of speed. The second he got back to camp he was immediately cursing his luck, he was supposed to be hiding from the gods and goddess, and he kept running into them, he would need to keep strengthened clones nearby to protect him, and Thalia since he would be damned if Artemis reported back to the asshole. He arrived back as Thalia smiled at him, so how'd hunting go? She asked as she was starving while he sighed. My hunt was stolen by some spoiled hunters of Artemis he said making Thalia scowl. What? And you just let them steal the food. She yelled as he holds up a hand to silence her. It was three hunters, including the lieutenant, and then Artemis appeared, and I knocked her out, though she was enraged, if she was more in control, she would be a difficult opponent he explained, making her huff in annoyance. Then what are we going to eat? She asked as he unsealed some food as Zetsu crawled back to him. Luckily we have leftovers that I can heat up he said as he set a clone to do it, before he pulled out a tag and started writing down a seal, with the help of the crescent moon mark on his palm. What are you doing? Thalia asked as she peeked over his shoulder while he smirked at her. It's a seal that will hide your appearance, just in case the hunters roll up on us he said as he rolled up her sleeve and places it on her arm before rolling the sleeve down, he channeled chakra into the sleeve and her appearance instantly changed. Her black hair turned red and her blue eyes turned violet as he modeled it after his mother's mortal aspect. There it should help keep you hidden if they spy on us he said, getting a nod from her before they started to eat breakfast. After breakfast they cleaned up and he was going to train her some more until a barrage of arrows surrounded them. Thalia drew her blades, but didn't charge them as she felt it would give her way, before they both frowned as they both knew those arrows, as seconds later a pissed off looking Artemis walked out of the forest. Ah crap he said with a groan and a flurry of mental curses. Safe to say he didn't quite have his godly luck while in this realm, so this is what Tsunade felt like he thought with a groan, as things went from bad to worse. Naruto moved Thalia behind him and slid Zetsu in her coat sleeve, Zetsu knew what to do if needed, but he knew Naruto would have it under control. Naruto turned to the goddess and activated his eyes, really that much of a sore loser that you come and attack me. He says as Artemis hunters come out of the trees, he doesn't draw his sword just yet, he wanted to try and get Artemis to leave him alone, and going straight to violence won't really help. You disgusting male laid a hand on me, knocked me out and left she says drawing her knife, he'll admit I let my rage get control of me, but now I'm in control, and you will have to pay she says glaring at him. He sighed and looked at Thalia who was still in the disguise stay back with Zetsu okay. He says getting a nod from her as Zetsu readies to open a portal to the pocket dimension at a moment's notice, he turned back to Artemis this is ridiculous, all this over a deer I killed, and don't you have to be attacked by a demigod first before you can retaliate. 
he asks making her smirk. Not if this is a hunt she says with a grin that remind him of Arachimaru making the girl smile. He frowns that's really cheap he says shaking his head. What you say we make this official. You swear on the river sticks that only you and I fight. If you win you get the girl and I become your slave. But if I win you swear to never reveal me to Zeus or anyone else. And you leave me alone. You don't send hunters to follow me. And you don't keep tabs on me he says staring her dead in the eyes. With the Shinju eyes spinning slowly. She would either swear on it or head make her. He wasn't taking chances of anyone knowing of Thalia or taking her away. Artemis smiles at the thought of having the son of chaos as a slave fine. I swear on the sticks to abide by your terms, but it is no problem. I am a goddess millennia older than you, and much more skilled she says as she twirls her blade. That was true, but Naruto had the help of a primordial and battle instincts from him as well. Also the abilities of his eyes and juts as even the scales. He takes out Tenno and swipes the blade across a Matarasu he calls out, creating a circle of black flames around them. This is so no one interferes. These black flames will burn all that it touches and will never be quenched he says turning to Thalia who was outside the ring. Do not worry I promise to keep you safe and I never break my promises he says making her smile. Are you ready to be defeated boy? She asks in an arrogant tone. He frowns and goes into his cloaked form staring her dead in the eyes, asking Shinju for help. Yes let's start, Tsukiyomi he calls out drawing her into his illusionary realm. Illusionary realm. He looked around his realm to see it was the old leaf village. It reminded him of the days when the villagers used to at least liked him, such as after Pain's invasion. Artemis looked around in shock where in the world did you take me? She asks unfamiliar with these forests. He sighed and stared at her. I have brought you to an illusionary realm of my creation. Years could pass in this realm for only a second to pass in the real world. Now I am not in any way a master at this. But I can at least control this to the basics. Now I can do three days at least he says as he turns to Artemis to find her standing bound by chains. Her eyes widened at the chains. A second ago she was fine. About to gain a new hunter by defeating him. And now she was at his mercy. Now I am not really one to hurt others without reason. But I find that you need to be taken down a peg he says pointing ten order. I will teach you to never underestimate someone. No matter if they are below you as a god can still die to a dagger he says plunging to blade through the stomach, burning her with the black flames. She screamed and blacked out only to open her eyes again to see the same scene my- You cannot die in this realm. When you do you just return to normal to repeat this over again. As I said I am not one to torture. So I will limit it to a day. It's been 5 minutes. Only 23 hours 55 minutes left. He says as he swings his blade to cut her head off. Minus one Tsukiyomi day later. He wills the world away to bring him back to the real world. He frowns as Artemis stares at him with fury in her eyes, as she goes down to a knee, strong will, but that is to be expected with you, he says as he swings Tenno down, bursting up the flames as one girl was trying to get through. What did you do to Melody? The same girl he met in the forest yells at him as she backs away from the flames. He sighs and looks to her I have no responsibility to explain myself. Ask your mistress when I win he said as he goes into his cloaked mode and summons the truth seeking orbs. He wasn't being cocky. He was confident and he had to win to keep Thalia safe. Artemis sends two hunting knives at him. The orbs block them unconsciously and he dashes to her and lands a palm thrust. Sending her crashing into a tree hard. Breaking a few ribs. He ducks under a sloppy kick and knees her thigh. Breaking that bone as well. She curses as she gets sent spiraling back, she was being toyed with, she could tell he was holding back, and it angered her. Artemis stands shakily and dashes towards him. He weaves around her slices and cuts her arms multiple times using small blades of wind chakra. He ducks under he and hit her with a hard uppercut, sending her flying upwards you. He sends two clones to kick her higher yelling zoo. Then three more punch her higher ma. After that two more throw her higher kai. Finally the original drop kicks her down full force in a very tsunade-like fashion Yuzumaki barrage. He yells as Artemis rockets down to the ground and causes the ground to shatter and crack. When the smoke dies down a heavily bleeding Artemis crawls from the hole he sent her in. Her golden blood drips to the ground. She shakily stands, barely able to stand you bastard, she says glaring at him with pure hatred. He appears behind her in a burst of speed and starts to sheath his sword. Even after everything you underestimated me Artemis, and thus was your downfall. He clicks his blade back into the sheath and a large number of cuts appear on her wind style. Swallow cuts he whispers as Artemis falls to the ground. He extinguishes the flames letting the hunters rush to Artemis, while some point their arrows to him. Stay still and let us redeem Melody the girl with the circlet says. He eases out of cloak mode, but keeps the orbs. I won the battle, meaning the Styx Oath is in play. She swore none of you would bother me. If you attack me, you risk betraying a Styx Oath, and that doesn't go down well, he says walking back to Thalia. The girl smiles and jumps up and down excited. Her blade strapped to her sides in a makeshift manner and a leather holsters he made to help her carry them around. That was crazy. 
what was that weird thing you did it was like you two were just standing there for a second before she fell to her knees all exhausted and seemed to be hurt she says as she sees the hunters glare at him as they take Artemis away, deciding not to risk breaking an oath on the river. Relax it was just an ability of my eyes, frankly I still can't use it on my own, he says as he had needed Shinju to help him. Luckily his control was much better so soon he will be learning the powers of his eyes, good thing he stole all of team scrolls on the Sharingan. He summoned a clone and transformed it into a bird and told it to watch the hunters and to dispel when they left, the clone flew off, his transforming ability had improved as well, as a kitty cold do a henge as well as the others, so he put too much chakra into it and discovered something incredibly useful, he could literally transform into other things, like the windmill shuriken that he turned if it was a normal henge, how would you explain the team throwing him like an actual windmill shuriken? The clone he sent off to gather items in a town came back, the clone had no trouble as he got all the items needed, he sealed away the perishable items and smiled at Thalia, she smiled back as they got back to training, sure it was all they were doing, but they were having fun, and they both needed to hone their skills, especially him since being chained in a dungeon for 3 years, tends to weaken you a bit, but thankfully his regenerative abilities kept his muscles from getting atrophy, Artemis, Artemis woke up a few hours after before she woke up, she rubbed her head as her hunters worried over her, then she remembered what happened, Happened. that male had trumped her in battle like it was nothing, that illusionary world, the cloning ability and that sword technique, but the thing that angered her the most was the fact she felt he was holding back extremely, between that confusing silver fiery appearance and those eyes that would haunt her nightmare, as well as those black orbs that floated around him, and apparently according to Zoe, could change their form, and those blades that gave off the aura of a god, she had only seen the red sheathed blade, but she could feel the black sheathed one was just as powerful, she knew that male had tremendous power and she hated it, she was taken from from her thoughts as oh, her faithful lieutenant shook her from her reprieve, Lady Artemis. Are you okay? She asks worried. She nods I am fine, as you were saying. She asks as she unrolls the bandages from her arm. Zo oh, nods I was saying that we need to find some way to act against that pig-headed male. You may have sworn an oath on the river Styx, but there has to be some way around it, she says making Artemis frown. There was a way around, she'd take the form of her Roman aspect, but that form is unstable, since she is around children of the Greek half, her Roman side would do who knows what with them, she'd have to wait a time where the oath would be null and void, which can happen if someone unknowing of the oath breaks it, so it would have to be a new hunter, and they were nowhere near anyone to possibly recruit. Tell the hunters we are packing up and moving to a new campground, we are heading north, we leave in three days time, and tell all hunters not to go searching for that man, or they will suffer the wrath of sticks she explains, making Zo nod and rush out to inform them. She sighed as she got up, still feeling the pain of being crashed into the ground at such a great speed. She hoped she never met that man again, he was too powerful and she did not like that. Minus two weeks later, Naruto. Naruto's clone had informed him that the hunters left after three days, so he was able to relax more and remove Thalia's hinge tag. Over the days he had been learning how to use the Shinja's eyes, they caused him a headache the first couple times, but now at least he could cast a with eye contact. Ailey also was making good progress with her blades. She even killed a few hellhounds that attacked her some time ago. They weren't much of a challenge. But he told her the same thing he told Artemis. A god can fall to a dagger, so don't get cocky. It seemed to help her as she was catching herself from thinking like that, Zetsu even noticed it as did Shinju, though he still wanted another week or so before doing anything with giving her chakra. He focused mostly on his eyes, but clones were definitely a godsend for training, as he now had a lot of elemental jutsus under his belt, ranging from the basic elements to even some from Mokuten, lava and steam, he still had his Rasengan, but he only used them when he truly wanted to obliterate something. He knew Thalia should be going to school, but having the knowledge of a primordial inside him helps him to be a good teacher for her, even if she complained every moment of it like he did when he was her age. Their cash problem was easily solved as his grandmother had oddly packed in Jurea's books away in the scroll. They had a note saying sell on them so that's exactly what he did. He sent a clone henged as Jurea and got the books published and something called a credit card that the money was put on. Aelia was fairly reserved, but she knew she could always talk to him about anything. She was opening up to him nicely. She even dragged him along to get girl stuff that he was frankly afraid to ask about. She also brought up her past of how her mother had broken down and how her brother got kidnapped. She cried in his arms for 15 minutes that day. He truly liked the young girl. Sure she was brash at times and quick-tempered, but so was he when he was her age, and she was slowly getting out of it, but was still like that at most times after all someone can't change in a short period of two weeks. He sighed as he sat training and drawing nature chakra with more ease, Thalia was bathing in the creek behind him, as he and Zetsu stood guard and swore on sticks not to peek, he was 20, nearly 21 for Kama's sake, he wasn't going to peek on a 12-year-old girl. He was relaxing when he heard her return wearing new clothes, but kept the lion pelt that was in a constant golden trench coat form. He looked to her and smiled as they walked back, he sighed Thalia are you tired of camping? 
he asks her as he starts on cooking dinner. Alia thinks for a second sure, but monsters would always find us, and we'd have to get away if we tried living in a town she says with a frown. He nods yes monsters will find us, but who says we need to run? With my skills of silent killing and your eventual use of chakra, we can survive peacefully for some time before big monsters come and start destroying stuff, and money isn't a problem as the last time I sent a clone into town to check my card's balance, it came up with a number with two commas he says making Thalia's jaw drop, she thinks a second before smiling I would love a place, but I think wed somewhere with a big backyard to train she says excited to finally have a house again, he chuckles ill sent some clones out to find houses for sale near here he says making her excited, she bounces in excitement and nods yes one with a nice big room for me. She says with a massive smile. We can leave tomorrow for the road, so you have to go to bed early, he says making her pout slightly, but not as dinner was served. Next day, Naruto had changed his outfit to be more modern, it consisted of dark jeans and an orange button-up with a black trench coat, so Zetsu could stain his sleeve, he kept his sandals of course, his swords were sealed inside a storage seal on his left wrist for easy access, he had the motorcycle he bought some time ago unsealed and everything sealed up in scrolls in the side bags, the motorcycle was a Harley Davidson colored in black with a sidecar, he made sure to get a helmet for Thalia and him, she was sitting excitedly in the sidecar, relax Thalia we will be heading off shortly, the clones found a nice house with a big backyard he says making her bounce more, Thalia nods and smiles I know but in getting my own room to decorate and have more clothes and somewhat normal life she says smiling happily, he ruffles her hair playfully, which made her swat away his arm, he hands her the helmet put that on, and we can get going he says making her fasten it quickly, he starts the bike and starts driving out of the forest carefully before he gets on the road, driving was easy, especially when he could manipulate the mist to broadcast his illusions to some extent, he even taught Thalia to manipulate the mist to a lesser extent, a few hours later they arrive at the house he set up to buy, with the help of clones during the night and the internet he was able to to buy it very quickly, the bubbly real estate agent dropped off the keys and showed them the house, it was a very nice looking one story house three bedroom house, large backyard and even a basement, he knew this won't last long, but he would try his best to keep her happy with a somewhat normal life for as long as he could, she deserved this much after everything she's gone through, Alia ran directly for the main bedroom, but he booted her out, he would have to take her shopping later, he was more focused on putting up a barrier, he slammed the crescent mark down on the ground, covering the ground in a large ceiling array, that grew the more chakra he pumped into the mark, that seal will notify him if someone entered the house will ill intent, he sent a clone to set a protective barrier around the border, he wasn't taking any risks, years of being a shinobi taught him to stay vigilant, he walked over to see Thalia smiling at her room I can decorate it however I want right? She asks with a smile. He nods and ruffles her hair of course, we can go right now if you want, it'll leave a clone to be here to sign for the furniture and everything he says making her smile more. How did you get all this done in a night? She asks somewhat confused. He chuckles well a mixture of many clones and a lot of money helps he says as they leave the house, they drove and got a lot of black and blue paint, as well as a lot of clothes and electronics, as his barrier can keep her demigod scent from being broadcasted. No one noticed the fact they were driving a motorcycle and buying enough stuff to overfill a minivan, the mist is a powerful thing. They return to the house to see clones setting up everything with Zetsu controlling one of the clones, he had it hinged to look like a normal version of white Zetsu, luckily he was able to parasite off it without the half black Thing. good to see you two are back, we have a guest he says, pointing to the 8 year old girl sitting by the fireplace, he looks to Zetsu and frowns how did she get in, he asks as Thalia shuffles behind him, the girl was wearing a cream dress with a hood, her cinnamon hair cut short and her eyes a fiery color, changing every few seconds as if they were flickering flames, but they had a kind home-like sense to them, Zetsu shrugs his shoulders moments after I lit the fire she appeared, she has no ill intentions in the very slightest, so she is fine he says leaving the room, Naruto turns to the woman Hescha. He asks confused how and why this goddess was here. The young looking goddess smiles at him and Thalia. You have a beautiful home here she says with a smile. Such a classic house. And perfect for the two of you she says as she waves her hand to conjure cookies and hot chocolate. Why are you here? He asks as Thalia hides more behind him. Why is it that when he is trying to hide from every god or goddess they end up finding him? First Demeter, then Hermes and worst of all Artemis, at least Demeter and Hermes were helpful, Artemis was an annoyance, hopefully Hestia was as kind as she was in the legends, Hestia smiles and looks towards Thalia relax I mean you all know harm as Hermes told me everything, I think what you are doing is sweet Naruto she says with a smile, I also chimed in at the meeting to try and save Thalia, my siblings can be quite heartless she says with a frown, Naruto turns to Thalia go stay with Zetsu, tell him it's all okay, 
but I just want to make sure he says getting a nod as Thalia rushes out of the room, Thalia always acted afraid around any god or goddess, he thinks it's because she's afraid they will return her to the tree, even if she was only in it for a couple hours it terrified her, she had described it as pure darkness, she cold make or hear any sound, and she felt float, she still had nightmares of it occasionally, once Thalia left the room he went over and sat across from Hestia, so you really mean Thalia no harm, cause I already had to fight one goddess to protect her, I don't want to do another as I can feel your league stronger than Artemis he says with a frown, Estia nods and smiles, handing him a cup of hot chocolate I apologize for my niece, she is too arrogant for her own good. I am sorry you had to fight her and put young Thalia through all this, she says taking a sip of hot chocolate, though from the feel of this house, you truly care for the child, she flashes him a warm smile. He nods and takes a sip that girl has gone through enough, and her asshole of a father doesn't make it any better, he says looking to the goddess, so what do we owe the visit Hestia? He asks as the goddess puts down her glass of hot chocolate, he turned to see Thalia ordering around some clones, as they carried her supplies to her room, he chuckled slightly before turning to the goddess again. I came here to visit your new household and maybe help you out and see this cute new family you formed, she says smiling at him, I can feel she considers you like a father and looks up to you, she says handing him a cookie. He takes a bite and frowns well, I'm glad you are here to help, strangely enough you are the third godly being to help me, he says making her chuckle. He raised an eyebrow as she changed from her eight-year-old form to that of one that looked around his age. She was a few inches shorter than him, and her short hair now reached the middle of her back, her figure cold be seen under her cream dress, but she gave off the aura of being very lovely figure, she stood up and dusted her dress off for crumbs, please do excuse this form, as I am fonder of my younger form, but I need this form to bless others, she says straightening her dress. He smiled well I think you look lovely Hestia he says getting a light blush from the goddess. The goddess felt nervous as she adjusted her dress and hood, she had never been complimented like this, never with someone with no ill intentions behind their words, the main reason she stayed in her younger form was because Hera and Aphrodite had been very unkind to her, because she unknowingly brought the attention of males, and she had once almost been raped at an Olympian party because of it, luckily a donkey had awoken her and protected her, wy thank you she says brushing her bangs to cover her blush, she clears her throat, so, she says as she places two fingers on his forehead, I Hester the goddess of hearth and home bless you to use powers of my domain she says, and then proceeds to take a step back, Naruto rubs his forehead and looks to the goddess I am honored to be blessed by you Hestia he says, flashing her a kind smile may I know what your blessing entrails, Estia blushes once again and turns around w well I'm glad you are honored, I have never blessed anyone before she says in an embarrassed tone, you will be able to conjure food and clothes as well as Greek fire, she says turning back around once her blush died down, Naruto nods and stands up if I am the first one you blessed, then I am even more thankful for the honor he said speaking the truth, from the info his grandmother had given him Hestia was very reserved yet unbelievably kind, she had no evil in her being, it saddened him that a goddess like this was taken from the council, the only voice of reason had disappeared appeared from it, I will do my best to not abuse your blessing, also feel free to visit whenever he says smiling again, Estia shifts back to her younger form, blushing again and nods I would like that, the only thing I ask is for you to offer some food each time to the gods and goddesses that voted to save Thalia, she says making the dishes disappear, Naruto nods and stands up the least I can do, also you being here will maybe get Thalia to stop being so nervous around the gods and goddess, I think she just fears returning to a tree he says as he gains memories from a clone, that Thalia dispelled on accident when they got in a paint fight, he chuckled and smiled at Hestia, Hestia nods I will try and visit regularly, as my Olympian duties do not require much, she says as she heads to the fire and strokes it, keep her safe Naruto, she will need a strong family to survive this harsh world as a demigod she says before vanishing from his house, he nods, he was dead set to keep her safe, as much as he could, and prepare her for the harsh world, he knew she would have to leave him eventually, as she was a possible child of prophecy, and needed to eventually be a part of that backwards camp, he just hoped he could train her enough before that came to be. Minus three months later, Naruto smiled as he overwatched Thalia's training inside his Kamui dimension. Over the three months he could at least draw her in here and return to the house, it made great training grounds, since the realm cold be destroyed or damaged. He also got the hang of Amaterasu and Kamui over the months, plus a small amount of Rinnegan abilities, but found he could use the abilities easier with their respective blades drawn. Yamato helped the Rinnegan and Tenno helped the Sharingan, just as his grandmother had told him. When he gave Thalia Chakra he found something interesting with her. She had two affinities, lightning and wind, that wasn't the surprising part since she was a child of Zeus, she was a lightning powerhouse, and he theorized she'd be able to fire off Kirins like nothing but the surprising part is she had two Kekai Genkai Storm and Swift Release, by mixing lightning and wind at different ratios, she could assess the both of them, and 
Wind plus and lightning equals swift, lightning plus and wind equals storm. He had been training her in numerous jutsus of her elements, and with Shinja's help he wrote down jutsus for her two releases. He was even teaching her the Rasengan as he trusted her with it. But the most surprising thing had happened around two months ago, about a month or so after Hestia's first visit. Flashback. Naruto was training Thalia in the backyard, Hestia was cooking in the kitchen, sure she could make food instantly, but for some reason she liked to cook, and especially liked to do it for him and Thalia. Training was going as normal until a massive roar filled the clearing, as something massive burst through the trees, he quickly burst to in front of Thalia and moved her behind him as a massive beast stared down at them. It stood on all fours with scaly gray skin, it had a long tail at its end and five massive heads with long snake-like necks, it was the Hydra. Thalia head inside, this is not a request he says in his stern voice, go stay with Hestia. I won't let this thing get near the house. She frowned but saw the look in his eyes. They were dead serious. Like he always was whenever he was worried about her getting hurt. Fine, but be careful. I don't want anything to happen to you. Dad, she says blushing darkly as she leaves a shocked Naruto behind. B did she just call me dad? He asks Shinju to hear him chuckle in response. Yes, she did, kid. Seems like him a great grandfather now, he says, making Naruto grumble. We'll figure this out later. We need to kill this thing, he says, looking to the beast that finally noticed him. We can't cut its heads off cause two will take its place. Fire is the weakness, he thinks with a smile. Great opportunity to test out a Greek fire jutsu, he says, as he dodges the lunges from the heads, keeping them at bay with his truth-seeking orbs. Over the month he found out his normal fire could be changed to Greek fire, a powerful green flames. He ran his hands through the hands signs and took a deep breath as a clone severed all their heads using wind style. Swallow cuts, the second the heads were cut he called out fire style. Greek desolation. Sending out a massive burst of green flames to cauterize the wounds, killing the beast in a shower of golden dust, leaving a scaly hide behind and two heads. He groaned as he put out the flames left on the ground and sealed up the hide and threw the heads in the fire and sacrificed them to Hestia. He walked his way back to the house to see Thalia hiding behind a 25-year-old looking Hestia. He chuckled as she smiled at him. Thalia are you okay there? He asks making her nod as she still hid behind Hestia. You know I don't mind you calling me dad, I actually really like it, especially since I've considered you a daughter shortly after I saved you, he says patting the punk girl's head. Thalia looks up to him nervously and nods as Hestia smiles kindly at the two. Well clean up and get ready for lunch she says making Thalia hug him quickly, before running off fast to get away from the embarrassing moment. Hestia smiled warmly at him thank you for the sacrifice, and thank you for being there for her, she says rubbing his arm before walking away. He smiled I promised it'd be here for her, being a father figure to her like she deserves is great for her, he says as he follows Hestia. Flashback end. Ever since she called him dad she had been very nervous and shy at times, she still called him dad at times, but most of the time when they were alone, she did it around Hestia, but very quietly, as if she didn't want her to hear. Also Hestia had been around nearly every day, it was nice having her around, she was someone nice to talk to and a sweet lady, she also helped Thalia with girl talk that he was nervous to do, especially when she got her first period, and he didn't know one thing about it. They had kicked him out of the academy when they were learning about reproduction stuff for some reason or another. He knew about the male side from the pervy sage, but even then he didn't truly trust those words. He was thankful to Hestia for her help that day. He cleared his throat that should be enough for one day Thalia. He calls out getting the girl's attention. She frowns come on. I can keep going. She yells back waving her swords charging them with lightning that happened unconsciously when she was angry. He chuckled and walked over to her, stepping on the floating platforms that riddled his realm. Relax, you have been working hard all day, you need to rest, and you still need to practice chakra control and the steps to the Rasengan he says making her grumble but sheath her blades. The sheaths were handmade by him, they were the first things he created using creation of all things. They were like a briefcase sort of sheath, they opened up on a hinge and clasp, she would lay the blades in and clasp them close, they even had a quick release which that would open them in a second for easy access. Fine, but you need to help me with the second step of it she says with a pout, you said I had to do it all, but you got a hint when you learned it, she says as the walk through the portal he made. He chuckles well I used a clone, but you don't have the same problem I had, you are just trying to make it rotate fast and powerful, maybe try multiple directions he says as he tosses her a rubber ball. She groaned why is this so difficult? I had no trouble with the Chidori and the Rikiri, even if you won't let me use the second one without you around, but that's not the problem, if I had no problem with techniques that powerful why is this one giving me so much trouble? She yells in frustration. He chuckles and ruffles her hair, you have an insane affinity to wind and mostly lightning, 
so those techniques were nothing to you, the Rasengan on the other hand is no element, it is pure chakra, pure chakra manipulation and pure shape manipulation, that is much more difficult he explains making her grumble, fine, but this is really annoying she says as she runs off to her room, she always went there to think if she was having trouble, her room was painted with black walls and grey dresser and bed, and the walls were covered with band posters, she had a computer, TV and MP3 player, as since the barrier stopped them from broadcasting her demigod scent, the Hydra had just accidentally wandered upon them, they occasionally got wandering monsters, mostly just Stymphalian birds, and hellhounds nothing else big, he chuckled as he went to rest in the living room, he conjured up some food and drink just in time for Hestia to appear in her aged form, hello there, how has the training been? She asks as she accepts a cup of tea, I hope you aren't pushing her too much, she is just a child after all she takes a sip of her tea and smiles, Naruto nods and drinks his tea I'm not pushing her too far, if anything she is pushing herself too far he says making the goddess chuckle before she frowns and puts down her glass, he notices it and puts his down as well, looking over to her, what is wrong Hestia? he asks confused, she looks to him and has a nervous look on her face Hera found out I have been in my elder form and that I have a champion and she wishes to meet said champion and test him she says with a frown, wait him your champion? he asks unknown to the fact, Estia blushes a bit and nods I'm sorry when I blessed you, I sort of made you my champion, I'm sorry I should've told you and I she says as she was interrupted by a finger on her lips, she looks up to see Naruto smiling kindly at her, it is fine, I don't mind being your champion as you are the most level-headed Olympian, I figure Hera will want me to fight someone. He asks getting a nod from her, he sighs and summons a clone for Zetsu to possess protect Thalia and tell her where I am and that I will be safe, okay? he says getting a nod from the possessed clone, be safe brother Zetsu says as he tossed Naruto the scroll that contained everything, he nods of course brother he says back as Zetsu leaves, he turns and smiles to Hestia ready whenever you are Hestia, he says with a warm smile, making her blush again, she nods yes, let's go she says as they flash away, Olympus, Naruto stared in interest at his surroundings, the sky was a glowing dark blue with dark grey clouds, brightened up from arching lightning between them, he saw Greek architecture all around with columns and arches, he looked around until his eyes landed on 12 large thrones, with equally as large beings on them, the Olympians, he noticed Demeter and Hermes who gave him small smiles while Artemis and Zeus glared at him heavily, Artemis seemed still healing from her posture, and Zeus just plain hated him, he is your champion sister? Hera asks looking at him, her bronze hair billowing over her shoulders, draping over her golden toga, her eyes looking at him as if judging him, son of chaos is a powerful champion, how did you get him as your champion? He hides his presence far too well for any of us to find him she says frowning. Naruto steps forward she found me while I was wandering around as I refused to stay in that backwards camp, she blessed me so I could stay fed, even though I can hunt quite easily he says as Zeus glares at him. How dare you speak badly of the camp? He says in anger, first this boy bad mouths him and now the camp he set up for millennia. Naruto looks to them and scoffs, you focus too much on training them as solo acts when they should work as cells, they stood around watching Thalia and her group struggle, and I had to jump in and save them, not to mention they aren't allowed to leave without permission or request, they never see or fight real monsters, and that leads to many dying when they do eventually go on a quest he said, making Athena nod, he speaks solid logic, in groups our kids would be stronger, and if they had experience fighting monsters under the watch of seasoned warriors, it would bring down the risk of quests considerably, she says making Zeus grumble but sit back down, Aphrodite smiles and waves at him why don't I borrow you from Hestia, since she has a vow of chastity you should get some fun, she says to him making Ares glare at him and Hephaestus glare at her, he shook his head no, I am not one to do that with someone I just met and someone I don't love he explains as he pinches the bridge of his nose, was this how the team felt when Sakura was all pushy for him. Hera cleared her throat if we can get back to what we called him here, for I would like to ask him a question Hera says as Aphrodite backs off from him, making Hestia happy, we call the son of chaos here, as we feel him being Hestia's champion is too dangerous as she is not an Olympian, she says making Naruto scoff, she is one of the most level-headed goddess out there, no offense Lady Demeter he says getting a kind smile and nod from said goddess, and after how you did Zeus punishment, I don't think I want to be any of your champions he says glaring down Zeus, you dare question my judgment he yells making Naruto glare heavily him, yes I dare. You decide to throw your punishment onto a scared little girl, a girl who had been running and surviving for years, just to finally end up at her safe haven to have her safety stolen from her. He yells making the Shinju eyes spin, you trapped her in who knows what kind of hellish limbo. To be alone for years until she somehow gets saved by demigods that have no idea what to do. Tell me oh god of judgment. Is that fair? He yells bursting into his cloaked mode. Zeus glares him down before Poseidon yells enough. 
Poseidon looks to Zeus he is right you pushed your punishment into your own daughter Zeus, and since the judgment has been passed we can't fix it, all we can hope for is that we did not screw over our child of prophecy, he says making Zeus lump in his seat glaring at Naruto. Poseidon looks at him you can relax now son, Zeus won't do anything he says getting Naruto out of his cloak mode, but keeps the eyes active, and who could blame him for being cautious around his paranoid brother, now all we want to do is evaluate you, a spar against Ares, he won't go overboard or anything, we just want to see how much strength you do have, he says getting a sigh from Naruto. I have no wish to just flaunt my power in a spar. I only fight to protect others, and if you want proof of how strong I am he opens a portal, connecting to Zetsu asking for the pelt for a second here. The pelt of the Nemean lioness he says showing it to all. I killed it by making it explode from the inside out with a seed he says as he tosses it back through the portal. Ares is drooling made it explode with a seed how does that work? He asks curious to see if he could do the same with grenades. Naruto sighs and stomps his foot, sending what little nature energy he had on him into the ground, he found with nature energy when corded through the ground, you could use Mokuten without hand signs, wood style. Springtime ensnarement he calls out catching a seed in his hand, I threw this in its mouth, sent chakra to it and grew a tree from the inside out he says tossing the seed over his shoulder, making it land in the garden, and a massive cherry blossom bloomed from it, Apollo lets out a whistle amazing, control over nature just like Demeter, did you know of that? He asks the goddess, she nods yes I did, and I allow him to grow whatever he wants, he does no harm in it, so why not she says with a shrug, what else can you do? Athena asks with a glint in her eyes, Naruto remembered that same glint from her daughter Annabeth, he shakes his head I will not go around explaining all my skills, I did it this one time to show you all I can survive on my own, now can I go as I have much to do, he says opening a portal, no one stops him or says anything, so he steps through and closes it behind him, Zeus turns to Hestia's sister you have a dangerous champion, if I feel you are trying anything I will smite you, and him consequences be damned, he says glaring at her only to get an ice cold glare from his normally warm sister, this causes him to flinch. Brother you need to stop being so paranoid. I only asked him to be my champion, so I could keep him from starving in the wild. No ulterior motives that you imagine so much she says before leaving to tend to the hearth. Zeus grumbles and slumps in his chair, he really hated that kid. Naruto. The second he got home he was hugged tackled by Thalia. Dad are you okay? Did they threaten you or anything? She asks worried. He chuckles and pets her head the asshole threatened me but I put him in his place with words, the queen was a bit pretentious but seemed fine, Athena was too curious, and Ares was itching for a fight, but I got out before any could start, I promised it keep myself safe to look after you, and I always keep my promises he says as he hugs her making her smile and hug her father back, he may not be my father by blood, but he has done more than any of my parents ever could she thinks as she backs away from the hug, oh. I finished the second step she says excited to learn the next step, he smiles and stands up as Thalia had knocked him down oh really. Great job he says as he gets a nod of assurance form Zetsu, now you just need to do both steps at the same time he says picking up a spare rubber ball and holding it up, nothing's happening she says with a frown, the ball wasn't rumbling or even twitching, he smiles and pops the bill in with a needle to reveal a perfect Rasengan under the balloon, now you must combine power and rotation and not pop the balloon, trust me I know it seems easy but it is the most difficult step he says handing her a bucket of rubber balloons, yeah we're gonna need them he says with a smirk as she darts off in excitement to train, don't train too long, he yells just as she closes her door, he turned to Zetsu and smiled so nothing interesting happened while I was away, he asked as Zetsu hid in his trench coat sleeve, nothing beside her training and worrying about you at the same time he says with a chuckle, you really like being a father for the girl don't you? He asks as he had seen his brother care for the girl a lot since he had saved her. Naruto nods of course, she reminds me of a younger version of myself minus the villagers and Watnity says waving it off, she deserves some father figure, since the asshole won't provide he says getting a chuckle from Zetsu. Well I better get started on dinner, and when I say I I mean my clones, he says summoning clones to get to work, he needed to study on something important, his eyes could wait, he needed this technique, should Thalia ever get taken away, or if she ever decides to go back to camp. He unsealed the scroll he was looking for for from the main scroll and opened it up, the first word said it all, introductions to learning of the Horatian or better known as the Flying Thunder God, he knew this was going to take some time to learn, Naruto frowned as he fiddled with Hermes business card, he needed some kunai made, so he could start testing his understanding of the Horatian, according to Shinju his father got the idea from watching his mother flash away to the godly realm, but the Horatian was different as it was much faster and easier, as well as less dangerous to demigods and mortals, the only downside was the need for a marker to warp to, but the help of Shinju he had it down in theory, but theory and real life application were two completely different things, he had spent the majority of two weeks reading through space-time ninjutsu theories that without Shinju, it would have taken much longer to understand, he pulled out his cell phone and walked out to the backyard stay inside Thalia, and continue with the third step I need to place an order with Hermes, he says getting an absent-minded nod 
thought from the punk girl as she was too focused on the Rasengan. He chuckled and dialed the number. He heard a voice on the other side. Yo, what you need? He heard Hermes say. I'm here. I need you to get Hephaestus to maybe build me something or at least get me some celestial bronze so I can make them on my own, he says as the phone hangs up on Hermes' end. Seconds later a flash fills the clearing. He looked to see Hermes standing atop a huge stack of big bronze cubes. This good enough. I had a feeling you'd call for material or something like this, he says jumping down from it, good luck using it as I have no idea on how to do it, and I doubt Hephaestus would help as he doesn't interact with people too well, he says waving him off, call again if you need help, he says before flashing away again, Naruto sighs and seals it all away, at least it went easy and quick, seems like Hermes pulled through with what he promised last time, he walks back in to see Thalia still absorbed in her third step, he chuckled and ruffled her hair getting a slap on his hand out of reflex for her, I'm going to be in the basement, Zetsu will be watching over the house okay. He says to her getting another nod. He shook his head and set up a clone for Zetsu to use and went down to the basement and removed the illusion he kept over it, revealing a huge forge and training grounds. After the run-in with the Hydra he trained her down here using spatial seals to make it 25 times larger than it originally was. His crescent mark worked wonders. He unsealed the materials and reread up on how to craft things. He needed the kunai to be celestial bronze with some chakra conductive steel which he had more than enough of, he found he could create celestial bronze with the creation of all things as the metal was very specific, he sighed as he created clones and got into the right gear to start forging, several hours later, he had finally got done using all the materials to make a crap load of Horatian kunais, and proceeded to mark them all, as his crescent mark could create the Horatian seal, which he promptly set on the house, and a leather spiked wristband for Thalia to have at all times, he would start testing tomorrow as he was exhausted and needed a shower, he walked up the stairs and went to his room to notice a passed out Thalia with a rubber ball still in her hand, poor girl tired herself out, he thought as he picked her up bridal carry and went to her room, he laid her down on her bed and pulled the blanket over her, only for her to grab his hand in her sleeping state, love you daddy she says clearly asleep from the mumble, he smiles kindly and places a small kiss on her forehead, Love you too Thalia he says as she smiles and lets go, still asleep. He chuckles as he turns to leave to see her desk covered in notes. He could see one named birthday gifts for dad. That one brought a massive smile to his face. He forgot it was getting close to his birthday. Had be turning 21 in a few months. He didn't look at the list as he didn't want to ruin the surprise or anything. He carefully left the room and closed the door behind him to see a smiling Zetsu clone before him. That girl definitely doesn't give up he says making Naruto sigh. He would have to watch over her to make sure she doesn't do the same again. It'll have to watch her more as she trains, so she doesn't overdo it anymore, go to bed or whatever you do at night, he said to Zetsu as he goes to his room to shower. Next day, Elia had woken up early and went back to work, which woke him up, all the loud pops were not good to sleep through. He got up to see Thalia still struggling with the third step hey, what did I tell you about training, he says rubbing the sleep from his eyes. She looks at him sheepishly, as long as you don't wake me and don't make yourself get chakra exhaustion I'm good. She says worried. Naruto sighs and bops her on the head. You woke me up and you made yourself pass out yesterday. So take it easy today. He says with a flat tone. She rubs her head fine dad. It'll take it easy she says sitting down at the table. Waiting for breakfast. He summons food for them and sits down. He tosses her the leather bracelet wear that at all times. Just as you do with an Emian pelt. If what I am training to do today goes correctly. It'll be able to get to you in a flash she says as he starts eating. Alia looks confused but puts it on. Smiling at the bracelet thanks dad. She says as she starts eating. Naruto smiles welcome Thalia. Now remember to be careful training he says getting a nod from her as they continue their meal. Thalia heads down to the basement with Zetsu as he was very cautious since gods or goddesses could still get in here. He sighs and heads outside, placing a marker near the door as he sits on the far side of the backyard. Now remember kid, each marker has a mixture of your chakra and small nature chakra. Since you put it there, it will only work as a marker for you to warp to. You need to feel the marker and pull yourself to it, Shinju says trying to explain it as simply as he can. I I understand all that Shinju, but actually doing that is more difficult, I can feel the marker and its pull, but I'm still working on going to it, he says as he tries to go to it but gets nowhere, maybe go into sage mode to get a better sense of it, and if that doesn't work put some of my chakra into it to strengthen it Shinju offers as help, Naruto sighs and sits in his meditative pose and eases into sage mode, first thing he noticed was the string of nature chakra connected to him and the marker, but the weird thing was it wasn't his, it was as if the stagnant nature chakra in the air connect him to the marker and kept the marker powered, if he could strengthen this pathway, it might make warping much easier, he went over to the marker and 
and sent some of Shinja's chakra into it and immediately felt the pole the second he placed it down, curious to see if he could pull it off, he went back to the edge of the backyard and took a deep breath and went with the pull, resulting in an orange flash, he smiled as he picked up the marker, twirling it around his finger perfect, that was much easier he said as Shinju chimed in, did that is because your father struggled with the theory for all those years, you had it in front of you, and not to mention my help, as well as your nature energy and access to my energy, it took you two weeks to understand it all, whereas your father took five years he explains, getting a nod of acceptance from Naruto, well thanks Shinju, this will help me much more he says as he heads inside to the basement, he say Thalia cursing as she sat down, she saw him and frowned dad I can't do it, she says getting upset, she wanted to make her dad proud by mastering his signature jutsu quickly, but couldn't do the final step, he chuckled and sat down grabbing her hand with the wristband putting Shinju's chakra into it, look Thalia it took my dad nearly three years to even make it, my godfather took many months, and so did my father's student, the only reason it took a week for me to do it was because I had my clones help me. You need to be patient and try and balance the ratio of power and rotation so it doesn't get out of hand he says hugging her kindly. She nods and wipes her tears thanks dad, did you finish what you were planning to do? She asks as she picks up another ball. He smiles and nods yup now I can always return to you as long as you have that bracelet on he says confusing her. How does that work? She asks as she tries out a ratio for power and rotation speed. He smiles and walks to the opposite side of the room and looks to her hold up your bracelet he says getting her to do it. Now don't freak out as my dad designed this technique he says as he disappears in an orange flash and ends up next to Thalia, shocking her greatly, it is called the Horation, and it's a space-timed ninjutsu like my Kamui he says getting a nod of understanding from her. Getting more and more shocking every time you show me something new dad she says chuckling, then frowning as the ball burst. Dust you wait till I figure out my eyes you will be even more shocked, he says as sits down to watch over her, hoping he can keep these peaceful times with his daughter. Minus two months later, it had been relatively peaceful for the last two months, a hellhound here, a cyclops there, nothing too bad. Alia had finally perfected the Rasengan after training in the third step for another week or so, she then focused on lightning and wind jutsus, as they were incredibly easy for her. Naruto focused on mastering the Horatian and aspects of his eyes among other elemental jutsus, it went nicely, but today he decided was a relaxation day as it was his birthday. A week or so ago Thalia asked for the credit card and Zetsu, so she could go to town, he knew what was going on as he saw the little list on her desk, didn't read it though, just the title, so he asked if her could come, she used her girl problems as an excuse for him to stay home, she always did that when she wanted something private, he was told by Thalia and strangely enough Hestia to stay in his room until they call for him, even Zetsu was out of the room, he suspected he went off to heaven like his did at the end of every month, to fill in mom of how he had been doing, he sighed as he heard them call for him, he had never been the birthday type, hell the only time he really celebrated it was with his dad at the end of the war, and that wasn't really anything, the other time had been with Aruka and Jiji, and that was just Raymond, which Shinju Wold let him summon mountains of it, claiming he needed a balanced diet, but he digressed, he walked out of his room and heard surprise. He saw Hestia, Thalia, Zetsu, his mom, and his grandma all together smiling at him. Um, mom and grandma what are you doing here? He asks looking to Hestia. She waved it off I explained everything and I love that you are here to help, maybe you will get my stubborn family to get along, she says with a kind smile. He sighs in relief as his mother hugs him tightly happy birthday Sachi, I'm sorry for missing all your other ones she says in a sad tone. Naruto frowns and hugs his mother back you are here now, it is all that matters. Now none of this sad stuff we are here for a party he says smiling at Thalia, mom and grandma, I would like to introduce you two to Thalia, original daughter of the asshole king and now adoptive daughter to myself, he says holding holding her close to him. She blushed and waved to the goddesses. The Madarasu squealed and hugged Thalia she is so cute. She yells making the other goddesses and Naruto sweat drop. Brahma please don't suffocate Thalia he says as he pulls her from his grandmother and moves her to his mother. The Gaia smiles at her hello Thalia you could say I'm your grandmother she says making the punk girl get nervous a bit. Kagaya chuckles and hugs the girl you are family, do not be nervous she says making Thalia smile. Okay everybody come get some cake, but first Naruto needs to blow out the candles Hestia calls out in her outer form. Naruto chuckles and looks at the candles, he takes a breath and blows out the candles, thinking only one thought I wish to keep Thalia and everyone in my life. The party went on as gifts were given, a Madarasu got him more scrolls and items she stole from the elemental nations, which were thriving nicely under Tsunade and Gara's watch, the villagers were upset at the loss of Chakra, but when they were told who took it they felt terrible. Anada apparently apologized to Tsunade according to the letter that came with his gift and described the reason why she didn't help, fear of the villagers and her clan elders which Tsunade completely understood as did he. Tsunade gave him sake, Shizun gave him hangover cures, and Gara gave him a gourd of iron sand, all very useful items. His mom gave him a male version of her kimono, 
but in reverse color scheme, he liked it a lot, he could use it for staying hidden and teaming up with Zetsu. Zetsu gave him a scroll on the Bone Pulse Kekai Genkai, which apparently he had but didn't know how to use, it could be useful so had learned to do it later. Escha's gift was very sweet, homemade cookies from the goddess of home and hearth, he took one bite and nearly passed out, due to how delicious they were, he immediately sealed them away to keep them all to himself, maybe head share with Thalia, but mostly all for him, something that made Hestia very proud. Then Thalia came up with her gift here you go dad, I hope you like she says as she hands him the box and looks down at her feet nervously, which made Amaterasu squeal and nearly hug the girl again, luckily his mom and Hestia held her back. He opened the box and nearly shed a tear, inside was a homemade orange scarf, she must knit this he thinks as he wraps it around his neck and smiles happily as he hugs his daughter, I love it Thalia, thank you he says making her smile brightly and hug him back. Welcome dad, it's my first time doing something like this, also she says pulling him down to her height and kisses his cheek, love you dad she says as she runs to hide behind Hestia who smiles warmly. He smiled brightly and smiled to her hidden form love you too Thalia, he says as the party continues on with Thalia occasionally being forcefully cuddled by his grandmother. Minus nine months since the party, one year till the lightning thief. Naruto stood before his daughter with Yamato in his hands and wearing black jeans and black sandals with a white button up and orange vest. Also around his neck was Tsunade's necklace, he would be wearing Thalia's scarf, but it was far too warm and since they were going to sparing he didn't want to damage it. Thalia had grown in the nine months, she was now 13 and they had celebrated her birthday in a similar manner to his, something that made her cry tears of joy. He had gotten her a summoning contract, the eagle one. She grew her short hair out so it was now down to her shoulders. In each ear was a small black bar a chakra rod. Only there so Naruto could summon her back to him if he was in range of her since they were small. She wore the golden trench coat that was actually the Nemean lioness pelt. She also wore gray skinny jeans and a green day band shirt with her leather studded band on her wrist. Strapped to her waist were the kibo blades in the sheaths he made for them. Over the nine months she learned more lightning jutsus than he did and even a large amount of wind jutsus, some that she learned in sea secret as he focused on his Horatian and keeping her and the house safe. Okay you know the rules. I will hold back from using the Shinja's eyes and the cloaked form as well as the orbs. This will be a straight sword fight and jutsu battle he says drawing Yamato and holding the sheath in his left hand. She nods and releases the Kiba blades any jutsu restrictions. She asks as she twirls the blades around getting ready. He nods no Rikiri and I will not use anything higher than the normal Rasengan he says getting a frown from her but nods once she remembers the power of a strengthened Rasengan or Rasen Shuriken. Ready? He asks getting a nod from her remember come at me with the intent to kill he says getting a shaky nod from her. He smiles and nods go. He yells getting a burst of speed from her. He immediately block strikes from all around, only thing keeping him from being cut was his heart and senses from battle as a shinobi. She is a natural at using her swift release Shinju says with a smirk as Naruto continues to block, luckily Yamato's sheath was invincible, so using it as a shield was nothing. He continued to block going to have to do better than just speed Thalia. He yells out as he quickly fires Chakra from his Tenketsu points and starts to spin Kaiten. He yells out creating a massive spiraling dome around him, sending Thalia skidding back before she was on defense from her father's powerful strikes. Thalia had noticed that while her father held back in their spars, he wasn't finding her weak, he just didn't want to hurt her. He always went to a level he felt she could trump if she truly pushed herself. Health that's how she found out she could summon black lightning. It was one of her most powerful techniques to use, and even more so to control. Naruto swung his blade before tossing the sheath up shortly before striking her with hidden vine, only for her to block it skillfully. He caught the sheath and switched the sheath and sword back to the right hands as he swept under her legs. He was impressed she had blocked that technique as he found it was difficult since your senses never noticed it before it was too late to block. Aelia jumped over the sweep and ran her hands through the hand seals, as she let the blades dangle from the band she put that were attached to her wrists, so she could drop the blades at a moment's notice to use a jutsu, and then grab them a second later, black lightning. Electromagnetic murder. She yells out creating a ball of dark lightning to fire numerous streams of high-powered streaks of pitch black lightning at her father. Naruto coated Yamato in wind chakra to negate the lightning element wind style. Dividing wind he yells as he swings his sword, creating a large blade of wind chakra, hitting about 2-3 rds of the streaks, he dodged a few others, his vision was obscured by the dust, he kept his senses alert, as he heard a chirping noise he knew all too well. He turned and saw Thalia not too far from him with a Chidori in her hand Chidori. 
she yells as she knew he had no time to create a Rasengan. He groaned and just as the Chidori hit he substituted with Log, he landed next to her and swing Yamato at her. She quickly grabbed her blades and blocked, but was sent skidding back from the force of the blow. She stabbed the blades in the ground and unstrapped them. Time to show him what Grandma gave me she says as her body was covered in electricity. He smiled lightning armor. Great job he said as he sheathed Yamato and sealed it away. Aelia burst towards him and attacked in a fury of powerful and incredibly fast punches. It had taken her five months to get to where she could keep it up in a spar against Zetsu, who helped her keep it hidden from her dad. Naruto blocked the strikes, feeling the power behind them. He used what he remembered of the frog kata to dodge and block her hits, but with her powerful lightning element and swift release, it was actually getting difficult at the current level he held himself at. Lightning uppercut. She yells firing a powerful hit towards his chin. He tries to block it with his hands, but still found himself being fired upwards. He smiled proud of his daughter and how strong she had gotten. He ran his hands through the seals and clapped his hands when style. Great breakthrough he calls out sending Thalia skidding backwards as the gust hit her hard. Naruto landed wiping the blood from her mouth and clapped, great job Thalia, you pass, you did amazing he said, making the girl smile brightly as she ran towards him. She jumped into his arms and hugged him tightly thank you dad, I never would've gotten like this if not for you she says with a smile. He hugs her back and smiles your control over black lightning is great, also using the lightning armor of the rakages is amazing, and that Chidori was greatly done he says making her smile more. Thanks dad, what was that spinning dome? thing. She asks as she sheaths her blades back and smiles. That was a memorial to a friend of mine I lost in war. His name was Niji Hayuga, and that was his clan's ultimate defense he said as he looked up into the sky as if to remember him. Aelia nodded him sorry for bringing up bad memories she says only to get a chuckle from him. Remembering the lost isn't a bad memory, it helps keep them warm in our hearts. Only when you lose sleep over them is it bad as they most likely won't want you to do that over them he says as he heads inside with her not far behind. Can you maybe tell me stories of your life in your original realm? Maybe we can visit there? She asks curious. He ruffled her hair playfully as he always did sure, I don't mind telling you some stories, but we can't visit right now, maybe later he says getting a nod from her, after she swatted his hand away like she always did. She didn't hate him ruffling her hair, but it made her feel like a little kid, but she put up with it cause it was from her dad, and he did it as a sign of affection. He summoned some drinks for them as he sat in front of the fireplace. He started around the time of him graduating after defeating Mizuki with his armies of clones. He told her of his first mission outside the village, and the encounter with Haku, and what he learned from the girl, and in my mind Haku will always be a female. He also mentioned the Chunin exams and how he defeated Gara and befriended him. He bitterly told her of Sasuke's betrayal and how he fought him at the Valley of End. He even showed her the scar. Why did you teach me a move that hurt you so bad? She asks with slight tears in her eyes. She almost hit him with the same technique that nearly killed him. He pet her head and smiled Thalia. I taught that to you as I felt you could use it as Sasuke could not, to protect people and not in revenge. You are nothing like Sasuke. Hell if anything you are more like me when I was your age he said chuckling as she smiled, then swatted his arm away like she always did. He got back to telling his stories as he found Thalia very interested. He told her of his training trip to going four tails and fighting Orochimaru. He told her of his learning of sage mode under the toads which confused her. Wait I've never seen you summon toads, just foxes, wolves, slugs and hawks she says confused, why did her father summon toads anymore if they were that powerful? He sighed and took a sip of the tea he made something happened, and they ended up leaving me hanging out to dry, they cold prevented something from happening, but chose to abandon me, but forget about that as it will make sense later he said, getting a nod from her. He went back to telling her of Pain's invasion and him getting Kurama's power under control, and the beginning of the fourth great ninja war. Wait you fraud against grandma? She asked shocked, her grandmother seemed so peaceful. He shook his head and explained to her the same way Shinju explained to him, which made her release a breath of relief, as he got to telling her the end of the war and what happened after. And then I came here and saved you, that's about everything he says as he rubs the back of his neck, trying to think if he forgot anything. Aelia frowned those villagers are assholes as are those toads she says getting a bop on her head. What did I tell you about cursing he says in his father tone as Zetsu liked to call it. She grumbles I can only curse if it's directed toward Zeus, she says rubbing her head. He smiles and nods exactly, now enough story time I believe it is getting near your bedtime he said, making her groan and look at him, M13. I shouldn't have a bedtime she says as she pouts at him, she had been training with deadly swords and deadly techniques, yet still had a bedtime, he pats her on the head it is so you get rest as your body is still growing and needs rest to grow, he says directing her to her room, she sighs and hugs him goodnight night dad she says as she leaves, night Thalia, sleep tight he says after he hugs her back and heads off to his room, minus two months later, ten months till lightning thief, over the next few months Naruto sent out clones with markers to test his distance and to mark certain places such as Thalia's tree and the Empire State Building. He found warping long distances wasn't difficult it just took some more energy. 
but with Shinju and his already insane reserves, it was of no worry. He was working on Horatian's second step where he would warp to it midair and found that more difficult as it wasn't connected to anything. But that's when it hit him, it was connected to the air and the nature energy flowing in it. It took him roughly a month or two to get the second step mastered. He sat in front of Thalia who was excited as laid before him was a summoning contract, not just any contract, it was the eagle contract, the one he found for her and gifted her for her birthday. She had signed it then, but he told her to wait until she was much stronger, as sometimes the summons will have the summoner fight for the right to summon them. Okay Thalia remember treat them with respect as they aren't fond of your father, as he claims the eagles as his animal, when he holds no attribute of them, such as equality and humbleness, since he thinks Hess always the best and hasn't been fair since very long ago, he says grumbling. Thalia nods of course dad, I'm ready she says with a smile, he nods and motions her to go. She takes a deep breath and runs through the hand sign summoning Jutsu. She calls out slamming her hands to the ground, enveloping the clearing in a large plume of smoke. Who has summoned me she hears a deep voice call out as huge bronze wings clear the smoke to reveal a huge eagle with dark green eyes and a golden beak. It looked around until it stared down at Thalia. Ah Thalia Atsutsuki, it said with a smile in its voice. Thalia signed with his last name as he officially adopted her shortly after she called him dad for the first time. She nods I would like permission to be your summoner, she says bowing to the huge beast. The eagle laughs oh I am glad you are nothing like your original father. We the Eagle Clan have heard of your progress from our brothers, the Hawks, and we would be proud to have you as a summoner and even our sage when the time comes, he says nodding. Thalia smiles brightly and bows again thank you boss summon of the Eagles, she says in a respectful tone. The Eagle looks at her my name is Mashatiro it says before dispelling. Thalia smiled brightly and turned to her dad, they accepted me. She yells in excitement, but they didn't have me do anything she says confused as to why. He smiled and ruffled her hair most likely cause they trust you from hearing from you from the hawks. Also eagles are very empathic, most animals are so they most likely felt no ill emotions that would mess with them, he says getting his hand swatted away. And if they are considering making you their sage which is a great honor for any summon to do, I was originally the toad sage, and now I'm the slug's first ever sage he says in a proud tone, making her smile even more, in a few months you might even go to their realm and learn he said patting her back. She smiles will you be able to come? She asks nervous. He smiles somewhat sad and shakes his head. I am not a summoner of them, and you have to go through it alone. But Zetsu will go with you to watch over you and relay messages he said hugging her. She frowns but nods hugging her father back well, not like him going right now, but we can still train and be together till I have to go, and I will return afterward she said smiling up to her dad. He nods true, but if you complete it you will be the youngest sage, beating me by three or so years he says as stands up and smiles at her let's rest for a bit and relax, we've been training really hard as of late, he says getting a nod from her, and... I use time skips to skip menial training that will have no importance, long story short Thalia learns to fight with her summons and use more lightning and wind jutsus and more control over black lightning. Naruto focuses on creating seals and training his daughter. Minus four months later, six more till Lightning Thief. Another year had passed before any of them realized Naruto's party was small just him and Thalia. He was given a bunch of gifts from his friends and family members again, and a silver skull ring and necklace from Thalia that he wore at all times. He stood hugging his daughter as she was finally ready to go under sage training. He spent the majority of the time training her to get to a level where sage mode won't be too difficult, but since she had his hyperactive personality when he was young it might be difficult. Also he hoped she won't be gone for her birthday that was in two months, but either way Zetsu had his gift for her, since he would be going with her. Stay safe and listen to your teachers, even if they smack you with sticks or anything as it is to get the nature energy out of you, so you don't turn to stone, he says as he fastens her scroll on her with her Nemean lioness pelt on her as always, her leather band was around her wrist, and Zetsu was in her sleeve. She nods and holds her dad's hand what are you gonna do while I'm gone? She asks making Naruto scratch his chin thinking. I might travel around, maybe fight some monsters or something, maybe go and see how that backwards camp is holding up he said, getting a nod from her. Stay safe dad she hugs him one last time love you she says as her father hugs her back. This was the first time she was leaving him for an extended point of time, she was worried, but he helped ease her worries I will be fine, you do the same, I love you too Thalia he says as he lets go of her to see her disappear with the eagle she summoned. He frowned and sighed, you miss her already? He heard Hestia say from behind him, she stood in her elder form with her head down, letting her cinnamon hair flow out. He nodded I've been with her for nearly two years, Shes grown on me and became my adopted daughter, how can I not miss her? He said as he rubbed the skull ring on his finger. Well do be safe when you travel, what are you going to do about the house? 
she asks as he heads back inside. I am going to set up countermeasures and leave a strengthened clone behind he says laying the crescent mark on Thalia's door, creating an intricate array on it. If the house is about to be destroyed or robbed all of Thalia's things will go to my Kamui pocket dimension. He then went over and strapped his scroll to his waist. It'll be fine Hestia, though I do hope nothing happens to it he says with a frown. Hestia nods I will look after it as well she says as Naruto hands her a weird three-pronged knife. Stab that in the ground if you need me, it's a marker for a teleportation technique of mine he said as he focused on a certain marker he set up near the camp. Hestia nodded and smiled thank you, enjoy your travel she says as he disappears in an orange flash. New York. Naruto frowned as he arrived in New York as the first thing he noticed was the weather, it was storming and the tides were crazy. Stupid asshole must be angry about one thing or another he thinks as he walks through the city. He wore dark jeans with his black sandals. He also wore a black button up with an orange jacket as it was winter. Around his neck was Thalia's scarf she made for him and a skull necklace. Tsunade's necklace was gone as he gave it to Zetsu to give it to Thalia. He knew the girl knew of its importance and he hoped she liked it. He walked through town noticing some females looking at him and groaned. It reminded him of how Aphrodite had offered her services to him at the meeting so long ago. He continued walking ignoring the stairs he got as he hid away in the closest store to him. He looked around to see himself in a candy store called Sweet on America. He walked around until he noticed one worked being yelled at by a customer. He got closer so he could overhear and possibly help her. The female had light blue eyes and wavy brown hair. She was in her uniform and looked around her early very early 30s. Look Gabe, we don't have enough money for you to spend tuning up your engine in your car, the woman says with a frown. The male, who looked like a mix between a walrus and a seal combined. He was disgusting to say the least. Yeah cause we spend all our money sending your idiotic son to a boarding school. We could always just take him out as he will only get kicked out again, the man he figured to be Gabe said in a snide tone. The woman sighs fine just use the money from my savings she says in defeat. The man smirks and pats her cheek good girl Sally, ill buy it all while you are at work, he says in a smug tone as he leaves the store. Sally frowns until she hears someone clear their throat, she turned around and blushed slightly, the man was a few years younger than she was, he had spiky vibrant blonde hair with two spiky bangs, framing his face with the rest of it in a ponytail, and the clearest sapphire blue eyes she had ever seen, and three whisker-like marks on each cheek, oh oh sorry customer, what can I help you with? She asks erasing her blush. He chuckled well I am looking for some orange candy, but I couldn't help but overhear the conversation, sorry for eavesdropping, but that man is disgusting, why is a beautiful woman like yourself with a man like that? It's obviously not for his personality he says ending in a flat tone. She blushes at being called beautiful and chuckles at his tone, but frowns sadly it is for my son she says as she gets a better look at him, I'm Sally Jackson, and you are she asks in a kind tone. Naruto rubs the back of his head well that is very strong of you, my name is Naruto Atsutsuki, though I have to ask why a mortal is blessed by Poseidon. He asks shocking her, nearly making her fall over. Luckily he caught her. He noticed Poseidon's blessing as he looked her over with the Shinja's eyes. The blessing looked like an aura of blue in the form of a crown made of what looked to be coral. H how do you know of that? She asks in a whisper as she straightened herself. She had never met another mortal that could see through the mist like she could, and how could he see Poseidon's blessing? She never heard of anyone doing that before. Naruto chuckled well I myself am a demigod and I can sense auras easily, he explains as he picks up a bag of jelly beans, we can always talk more maybe after your work. As I think I can help keep your kids safe and keep you from having to stay with that vile man he said as she nodded and rang him up. I get off at 7 though I am curious of how you survived so long she says as she hands him the receipt. He smiled and took the receipt well I am a bit special, he'll explain more after you get off work he says as he leaves the store. He really didn't like the way that man treated her. Now he isn't like Artemis, he just happens to hate this one man for how he acted, he thought up a plan to help her out a bit. He summoned a clone and smiled at it, you know what to do he says as the clone nods and body flickers away. He wasn't going to kill that man just yet, he first needed to give her the suppression tag he created. He made it long ago when he and Thalia were first traveling together, it would suppress their aura but not their abilities, so it was more a camouflage tag. He waited around until Seven rolled around, he waited out front as Sally walked out still in uniform but was wearing a jacket, ready. She asks. He nods and they walk, so who is your godly parent? She asks as they cross the street. Chaos, technically I'm a demi primordial, but not that it really matters he says shocking her more so. See Chaos, the primordial of creation is your mother? She says in shock, you must be powerful she says looking him over. He shrugs his shoulders, I don't care about being strong, as long as I can protect my daughter, I adopted her over two years ago, she is busy at the moment so I'm all alone at the moment, while we traveled I developed something to hide her aura and keep her powers he says pulling out a tag with the seal on it. Sally looks it over confused how is paper supposed to help my son. 
she asks as she runs her finger over the markings. It uses energy that this realm hasn't seen in eons. It will work trust me he says flashing her a kind smile that made her blush as she slipped the paper away. So now you can leave that vile man if you wish he said, giving her a thumbs up. She chuckled but frowned, somewhat afraid of how Gabe would react. Hess never laid a hand on her per se but he wasn't non-violent, he would threaten her son, even if I did I won't be able to support myself she says with a frown, Gabe paid for most of the expenses since he was a manager at an electronics store, well god thing you are being promoted he said brandishing a huge smile, Sally stared at him confused what do you mean? I'm not getting promoted she says in a wary tone, he flips open his phone and dials a number yes, did the deal go through? He asks to the person on the other end, great and not too bad on the cost, be sure to promote Sally he said, giving the confused brunette a thumbs up, okay, thanks, bye he said closing the phone, he turns to Sally well, you are looking at the new owner of Sweet on America, and you are the new manager, better pay and free candy he said with a smile shocking her even more, you bought the little store, why, or better yet how, she asked, whoever this man was he was powerful, he nodded his head yeah why not, it's a cute little store and I wanted to help you, you get crap pay, and I feel now you can relax more, and I used the pay from my godfather's books that I republished, so it was no big deal he said, waving it off as they continued walking, now you don't have to worry about financing, he said in a carefree tone, flashing her a fox-like grin, she smiles but still feels nervous of doing it, she fears of Gabe hurting his son or seeking her son out, another thing you should know is I'm empathic, I can feel your fear he said in a solemn tone with a frown making her frown and look to her feet, I can take care of him Sally, he is pure trash and you know it, I won't make it messy, you deserve your freedom he said shocking her, did she really ask him to do this, a demigod she just met not hours ago. She took a shaky breath and nodded please don't make him suffer she said in a quiet tone, he smiled and chuckled you are too good of a woman Sally he said smiling to her as they continued to walk towards her apartment, when they got there Naruto turned to Sally wait out here until I return, by the time I return he will be gone, and so shall all his trash, you can keep the car he said chuckling as Sally nodded and gave him the key, he kept his smile until he closed the door behind him, and it turned to a frown as he saw the mess of an apartment before him, he activated his eyes and looked around, are you really going to help her out? Shinju asks as he had been silent the entire time, watching to see his grandson's reasoning for doing all this. She is such a pure-hearted woman, she sacrifices everything for her son and is terrified of her spouse, she deserves to be free, will you help me with the human path? He asked in a serious tone. Of course, let's deliver him to Hades Shinju says with a fang smile. Naruto smirks and walks into the house. Oi Sally get your ass in here I need you to unlock the damn safe so I can get your checking book from it. He hears Gabe yell from the other room. Naruto grows a massive smirk let's put on a show he thinks as he puts on a henge of the Shinigami of his realm. He slowly walks to the room and infuses his voice with Shinju's menacing voice. Hey Bugliano, you have been found guilty of being a terrible human being he says making the seal man jump and scurry back in fear. The man was shaking in fear and no I can't be dying. Take Sally and steady yells making Naruto scowl in hatred. You are a terrible person, after this day no one will ever remember your horrid life he says placing his finger on the man's shaking forehead, human path. Soul removal he says tearing Gabe's soul from his body in one fail swoop, he drops the soul to the ground, letting it fade away to the underworld. He glared in disgust as he stared down at the man's dead body as he dropped his hinge. This man while he was at death's doors offered up his wife trying to get out of death, he stared at the man's body and drew Tenno from his seal. Amaterasu he calls out burning the body alone and destroying the ashes as well. He summons two clones go destroy anything of his and leave anything of value for Sally he said, getting nods from the clones as they hurry to get to work. As he walks to the door he notices pictures of Sally with a small boy. He had dark black hair with sea green eyes, must be her son, he thinks as he exits the house. He smiles at Sally all good he says getting her attention. She looked at him and nodded as she headed inside with him behind. She cried tears of joy seeing everything of Gabe's gone and no sign that he was even there. Thank Thank you Naruto, I don't know how I could ever thank you, in one day you have helped me so much she says smiling at him, he smiled did his fine Sally, it'd like to give you this as well he says handing her a credit card and a slip of paper, the first is an account set up to help you, and the next is my number, if you ever need me he said, placing a tagged version of the Horatian seal on her wall, for it to burn into it and disappear, she frowned I can't accept this card she said, trying to hand it back to him only for him to deny it, you don't even need to use it, just have it in case you ever need it, it has a fraction of my total account on it, and will get periodical payments deposited into it he said, flashing her a warm smile, he turns around well I ought to be going, I need to find a hotel or something to stay in for the time I am staying in New York he said heading for the door, wait, he hears Sally yell out, he turns to see her standing nervously, you can stay here on the pull out couch if you want, it offer you my son's room, but he is returning for winter break soon, she says nervous, with a slight blush, he smiles and bows thank you very much Sally, are you sure? 
I don't wish to inconvenience you by staying here he says getting a chuckle from Sally. You have done too much for me, if anything I am the inconvenience, my son is 11, so it is no worry she says getting a nod from him. Fine, but I cook if I am being your guest he says getting a smile from Sally. As long as you cook your food blue for my son she says confusing him a bit, he shrugged his shoulders must be an inside family thing he thinks as he pulls out the bed. He turns to Sally well I will see you in the morning Sally, good night he says with a smile that made her blush slightly. She nodded and headed off to bed. Tomorrow, Naruto woke up slightly after Sally as she had to leave to pick up her son. He spent the morning cleaning the house with clones as he created blue food for them. He heard Sally drive up to the house as he set the food down at the table. Moments later a little kid burst into the house and looked at him confused. Who are you? The boy asks very bluntly as the kid looked at in confusion. He chuckled as he felt he would start to like this kid after some time. Naruto stared at the boy in front of him. It was the same boy from the photos on the wall. He was wearing a uniform of sorts and was looking at him in confusion. Naruto chuckled my name is Naruto, you could say I'm your mom's new boss. He says still curious if that's how it is, I also helped her get that jerk Gabe out of here he said, getting a smile from the kid. Sally comes rushing and Percy please don't run inside like that, I wanted to be here to introduce you to our guest, she says smiling to him as she looked to the food on the table, all of it blue, thank you Naruto for cleaning and cooking, though you didn't need to clean, she said with a slight frown, upset that he was helping her more so, and yet she hasn't done much to repay him. He waved her off I am guest here I need to help out a little bit he says as the kid Percy walks up to him, he looks to the 11 year old and smiles smiles what can I do for you? He asked with a smile. Percy looks him over how did you know to make the food blue? He asks. Naruto chuckles and shrugs his shoulders your mom told me, I personally don't know why, but who am I to complain he said with a smirk, sit down, eat up and enjoy your break from school, he saying motioning to the seats. Percy nods and smiles thanks, he says running off to eat. Naruto chuckles and looks to Sally definitely a hyper kid, though I think my daughter might have him beat on that he said, making Sally giggle and smile. So what is your daughter's name? She asked with a kind smile as they sat down to eat at their own pace, as Percy was basically inhaling it all. Her name is Thalia and she is 14, mind you she is adopted, but she might as well be my daughter. By the way she acts as eerily similar to me when I was her age, he said with a smile, still missing his daughter, some even if she only left him yesterday. She has a godly father, but he basically sent her to her death, and I happened to be there to save her, and we have been together ever since, except for now as she is off doing something important for the next few months he said staring out of the window with a slight Frown. Sally frowns a bit well I am glad you were able to save here and I am sorry she is away, I would love to meet her, who is her godly parent? She asks curious. He shakes his head I can't say as it would endanger you and possibly her he said getting a frown from Sally. But Sally knew that speaking the god's name gets their attention especially in New York being so close to Mount Olympus. She turned to see Percy all done with his food, he smiled at her can I have more mom? he asks looking to his plate. She smiled and nodded heading to the kitchen to plate him more food to notice no pans were dirtied or even used. Ah forgot to tell you about that she hears Naruto say from behind her. She turns around and looks at him confused tell me what? Where is the food? She asked not understanding at all. He pointed to the plate and more blue food appeared. I also happen to be the champion of Hestia. Conjuring food is a blessing of hers, he said with a smile as he went back to the table. Sally shook her head. Ever since she met Naruto he has been constant surprises. Last night she called the card to find out its balance and set up a pin number to find that there was over $2 million on the card. Naruto told her it was a small fraction of his sales. If $2 million was small, he had to be rich, but he didn't show any aura or attitude of a well-off person. More of someone who can comfortably meat ends meet with some small leftovers to buy the occasional splurge item, she decided she would only use the card for emergencies or possibly college for herself and her son when the time arrives. She went back to the table and gave her son the plate and smiled as he ate happily, most likely due to the fact Gabe was gone. She told him she kicked him out with the help of a new friend and was rid of him, leaving out that Gabe was now in Hades' realm of course, not really something she would tell her kid. Naruto smiled at Percy so Percy why the blue food anyways? He asked making Sally giggle. I can answer that she said gaining his attention. Some time ago Gabe and I got in an argument that there was no blue food, so I would go out of my way finding any blue food possible. And now ever since then I make Percy blue food all the time she says making her son smile and nod. So how is school going Percy? She asks making him frown. Not good, Nancy Bobafit keeps being terrible and giving me and Grover trouble he says frowning. But at least I should be able to keep in there until school ends. But there is a field trip to this museum thing soon with Mr. Burner he said as his mother smiled at him. You are doing such a good job Percy I am so proud of you, she says in a loving motherly tone. Naruto smiled at the two, Sally was definitely a great mother and she showed it, putting up with Gabe to hide his scent was a testament to that. Percy turned to him and looked confused so how long are you staying here for? He asks getting a slap on his arm by his mother. Percy don't ask that. 
after all he has done for me he could move in for all I care she says scolding him. Naruto chuckles. It is okay Sally he says smiling kindly to her which made her blush slightly. Percy no need to worry I won't be staying here all too long, though I might visit occasionally. I have my own house in Oregon and only came here to check up on a few things when I ran into your mother and helped her out. Most likely I will be here for a month or two at the very most he explains, getting a nod for the 11 year old. Sally sent him an apologetic smile that he waved away. He knew how kids were. Thalia could be just as blunt if not more. It happened whenever they went shopping and had be hit on by single mothers and single women. Thalia was oddly protective of him when it came to the opposite sex, especially goddesses. When Hestia first started showing up she would hold into his arm and stare at the goddess intently, as if to be warning her to stay away from him. Something that had made him and Hestia chuckle over on many occasions, Thalia still guarded him around Hestia sometimes but not much anymore. He feared how she would react if she ever met Aphrodite, and how she was such a shameless flirt with him, yeah I'd think the horns would make the goddess shy away from him, but apparently not. Man. Naruto still has his horns he just hides them with the mist. Sally didn't question them as she figured he got it from chaos. She noticed them the second he told her he was a demigod. After breakfast Sally and Percy got all packed up for an annual trip they took. Are you sure you don't want to come? She asks upset she is just leaving him alone. He waves it off do not worry, I have some things to check up on, but I will look after the house while well, you two are gone he said, flashing them a smile. Percy just wants his mother to focus on leaving call me if you need anything she says as her son pulls her towards the car. My cell will work, I'm sorry for having to leave you behind, she says while Naruto waves it away. Forget about me, enjoy yourself for the week or so, you all deserve it, and don't forget to use that if you need me, he says shooing them away with a kind smile. He had given Sally a marker just in case she needed it. He had seen that Sally put the camouflage tag on Percy, so that should keep him and her safe, but there are always just wandering beasts that could find them. He stands outside until they drive off. He heads inside and straps his scroll this is back. He summons a clone and orders it to look after the house. He takes a deep breath and focuses on the marker near the border of the camp and disappeared in an orange flash. Amp half blood. Naruto frowned at the tree that held the clone of Thalia. It looked uncared for as if they just left it there and didn't water it or anything. Even if if it was a clone they didn't know that, to them it was the real Thalia inside it. He sneaked inside the camp and frowned, the camp seemed to be full of negative emotions, mostly sadness and some resentment. He looked over the camp from the shadows and noticed someone he remembered, the small blonde Athena child he met when he first got here, Annabeth if his memory was correct. He could feel regret and sadness rolling off her as she looked at Thalia's and a bit of something he called pinpoint as he was more attuned to negative, whatever emotion she had was positive, so he had no idea. He also noticed the son of Hermes, Luke that he also also met when he first arrived here, he could feel pure rage rolling off him as he looked at Dionysus and anger. He sighed as he recognized a combination. Luke was slowly becoming a Sasuke by becoming intent on getting revenge on the gods for what they did to Thalia, and had be damned if had let it happen. He activated his eyes and whispered out Kamui drawing him and Luke into his pocket dimension. Pocket dimension. Luke looked around shocked. One moment he was in the forest, and next he was in this weird grayscale area with floating blocks and platforms all around him. Whoever is there show yourself. He yells out brandishing his sword. Relax kid, even with that sword you cold and do much damage to me in my own little pocket dimension he said as he came out from his cover looking the kid over. He had grown in his years, he looked around 16 or so, he had a new scar near his right eye. You brought me here? Why? He asked still wary of the man, he hadn't seen him since he saved them and yelled at Chiron and Zeus, before catching a bolt in his bare hand and crushing it. Naruto nodded I brought you here to try and steer you away from the path you are heading down, I know you have rage towards the gods, and you do have some right to have it, but I know you plan to get revenge, but that is stupid he says making Luke glare at him, revenge will solve nothing, just cause more pain, you need to help get strong, so you can be strong enough to change things. Not by revolting or causing a revolution as that will cause nothing but death he says in a serious tone. Luke glares at him in rage what would you know? You most likely got everything handed to you and lived a perfect life. Well we demigods had to struggle to survive outside of camp. If I can take down the gods I can change everything. He yells only to be hit in the gut by a strong hit. Luke you don't know shit about me, from the age of 4 to 8. I lived on the streets of my village, from 8 to 12. I was constantly hunted by the villagers of my village, and then when I finally got a friend, he betrayed me and went evil. Over the years I fought people with powers that you would think they were gods. One of them had the eyes of one and powers you won't believe. Hell I fought a primordial and nearly died, so don't you dare think you know me, 
he said in a deathly calm, bone-chilling tone, if you fight the gods you and many others will die in this pointless fight. My mother claimed me so I could try and help Olympus reach peace. You need to let this go or it will eat you away and take away everything you hold dear, he said, staring him in the eyes with his Shinju eyes. Luke goes pale. The tone in Naruto's voice was terrifying. His voice bore no falsehood or lies. He had thought it over numerous times. Ethan had told him of a ritual to become the vessel to crown his spirit, but now he was shying away from it. Maybe head stay in camp and try to change things while on the side. He sadly cold stop Ethan as he had left camp weeks ago, but hopefully the son of Nemesis won't go through with it, he nods fine, but what am I to do? I am just a son of Hermes. He asks with a frown. Naruto smiled as he felt the negative emotions in the boy dwindle down. The smallest people can make the biggest imprints. The smallest decisions can lead to the biggest changes, he said. Handing the boy a marker. Stab it in the ground. Whenever you are in desperate need of help, he said. Getting a nod from him. Also do not speak of this to anyone. And I won't mention how you nearly went to the dark side, he said as Luke nodded nervously. He looked to Luke one last time before whispering Kamui exiting with him from the pocket dimension. Amp half-blood. He smiled as he saw Luke smile up at the sky and walk away. His negative emotions were all but gone, sure he still had some hard feelings for the gods, but that was understandable, they had taken a dear friend, he was just glad Luke was steering away from the dark path, he watched over some other campers and found only a few were skilled in the slightest, there was a girl, from Ari's cabin who fought with an electric spear, she was okay as she was more suited for a spear, since the girl was very gruff, her name was Claris from what he heard with his chakra enhanced senses, Pamp was very boring, truthfully he would never stay here as it was too bland for his tastes, during dinner he he was sitting atop a marble column hidden using a strengthened version of Jureya's camouflage jutsu. He old left long ago, but one, he had nothing better to do and two, he wanted to see a full day in camp, all he heard was gossip, kids wanting to go on quests and complaining, frankly it annoyed him. He noticed Hestia near the flames as she waved at him, him being her champion he cold tied from her. He waved back and smiled before she disappeared, probably off to look over the house or do her Olympian duties. He looked down at the campers again as they went off to sleep. He groaned and stood up atop the column and stretched a bit. I swear when Thalia's clone comes out of here we are leaving clones in our places, unless she goes on a quest or on a mission or whatever it is. I will not stay in this boring camp unless I absolutely have to he thinks with a groan as he flashes away leaving behind confused campers as to why there was a sudden orange flash. Sally's house. He decided to sleep after sending some clones out to do a few chores he wanted. He was exhausted from the boring day in the camp, only interesting part was this morning with Sally and her son, and then the moment with Luke, he truly did hope the boy would turn himself around. Around. Maybe he could find something more interesting to do tomorrow. Dream. Naruto was not one to see demigod dreams. Shinju blocked them as he found them useless 90% of the time. So for whatever reason this one was important. He was on a beach. The weather was worse than it was in the real world. He could see a golden eagle fighting a sea green horse. They were going blow for blow. Until a murder of crows flies in and gets in between the two, trying to stop them from fighting. In the distance he could vaguely make out another animal just standing there almost smiling with one golden and one red glowing eye. He understood what it meant, Poseidon and Zeus were fighting. Hades was trying to stop them or hurt Zeus, both were good, and another god was being controlled. And Remember Amaterasu gave him full knowledge of the Greek realm that means anything relating to the gods, such as what animals they are related to. He sighed as the dream faded away, basically shit was going to go down pretty soon. Real world. He awoke from his dream with a groan, sorry kid I just thought you might want to see that, so you can prepare yourself, Shinju said as he sat up from the pullout couch. It's fine, I most likely did need to see that he said as he got up from the bed and went to the table to eat some food. He decided to visit the camp one more time, just for a short period, as he was mostly curious about the feelings he felt from that Anabeth girl. Shinju could you help me detect positive emotions instead of just negative? He asks as he straps his scroll to his waist. Sage mode can solve that. Just be careful of drawing dryads and satyrs attention. He explains going back to sleep. Shinju didn't mind being inside his grandson but it got boring sometimes. Naruto nodded and took the time needed to ease into sage mode. The slug marks appear and his eyes change. He nods to the clone and flashes away. Pamp half-blood. Naruto arrived at camp and tested out if he could really feel positive emotions. From the Aphrodite cabin he could feel waves of love and lust which surprised him, since most of them were quite young. He shook off a shiver and went to find Annabeth. He found her near Thalia's tree. He felt the same emotions from her as he did from yesterday, except he could finally pinpoint the positive part. It was love, but it felt unsure and confused. He couldn't tell if it was a sibling kind of love, 
but it felt very pure, even as it was confused, no negative pieces in it. He had heard that in this realm girl dated girls and males dated males. He was from a realm where incest was smiled upon, as long as it kept a bloodline strong, so same gender relationships were better in his eyes than weird incest. But then again these Greeks did a lot of that as well. He was curious about Annabeth and her feelings, so he followed her for most of the day. When she was near Luke, he felt the same love emotion from her towards him, but much more watered down, maybe this was sibling kind of love, one you feel towards a brother and not romantic. He also noticed Luke had the same sort of feeling, so he too saw her as a sibling possibly. He saw that Luke was less negative and more calm, determined, which was very good for the boy. He felt around for move positive emotions so he could become accustomed to them, so he might be able to determine them out of sage mode before getting bored. He really missed Thalia. She always made it interesting and fun. The hyper girl was a great part of his new life. He was glad he saved her and gave her a normalish life. He groaned and decided to just stay in Sally's house until they returned. Not much else to really do. He disappeared in an orange flash, confusing the campers once again. Minus two weeks later, Naruto smiled as Sally and Percy returned, they looked to have enjoyed themselves and had a good time. Sorry again that I left you here, Naruto Sally says with a frown as he waved it off yet again. It was a family thing, it would feel weird if I went with you and anyways I should be going as I have a business to watch over Miss Manager he said, ending with a teasing tone that made her giggle and blush slightly. Well I will do my best at manager, you can always visit or stay here whenever you are in New York she says with such a kind smile he cold and find the heart to tell her that he had bought a flat in the building next door. It was coincidence it was the closest one available. He nodded and strapped his scroll to his waist again and said goodbye to the small family. He walked a bit until he went into the forest. You can come out now I felt you following me since I left the house he says to the seemingly empty clearing. Seconds later someone familiar appears, Artemis, but in her Roman form, her hair was darker auburn and the olive green in her outfit changed to dark purple as her blades also turned to gold, imperial gold, so she figured out a loophole he thinks with a frown as Diana steps towards him. You might have defeated my puny Greek side puny male but this form is much more powerful and skilled, she says stepping to him. He frowned stop this Diana, this is ridiculous, Artemis fought me over a stupid deer, and she attacked first, I merely defended myself, never once did I antagonize her or you or however this stupid dual natures works out he said, pinching the bridge of his nose, just stop this nonsense as I am not in the mood for it, he says looking at her, no male, I am going to restore my honor, I am the huntress, assigned to females that men are weak, I must regain it, she says, drawing her hunting knives, he glares and turns on his eyes fine, but since we are too close to camp, let's go somewhere better he says spinning his eyes Kamui he calls out drawing them into his dimension. Pocket dimension. Diana looks around confused, she was in a weird space of floating platforms and blocks, this is my own little pocket dimension, one only I have access to he says drawing out Tenno. He wanted to focus on his Sharingan aspects before going to his Rinnegan, so he mostly used Tenno to help it ease the control over the abilities, as the sword eased the stress of accessing the powers. Diana glares so you brought me here to have your way with me once you defeat me. She yells accusing him. He stares at her deadpan stop jumping to the worst conclusion. I am not like that. I brought you here. So I won't destroy the landscape like I did back then he looks at her. He wasn't going to fight her with a sword. He wanted to try something out. He was going to access the last aspect of the Sharingan left. He stared at Diana with his eyes spinning fast and spoke out one word Susano he said, causing a massive explosion of fiery energy. His body was engulfed in a shroud of silver energy as an ethereal spine started to grow behind him. Vertebrae by vertebrae it grew taller. As it got to the correct height ribs started to form, once the torso was made four arms grew out of it and two heads atop it, one was facing backwards and the other forward, tendons grew over the bones and turned more solid. In one arm grew a golden flaming katana, on another grew a golden bow with an arrow in the third and a sheath for the sword in the fourth hand, the heads had horns like him and fangs for all the teeth. He could feel his body burning extremely relaxed kid that is normal but I will keep it from going too bad, just end this annoying charade as I too, find this annoying Shinju said, as Naruto felt the burning sensation lesson, this is the ultimate defense and offense of my eyes, if I defeat you, I want you to leave me alone. I didn't do shit to deserve this he says glaring at the shell-shocked goddess, as he pulls back an arrow, swear on sticks or your Roman honor, or however that goes that you will leave me alone or I will make you. He yells pulling the arrow back further. Diana frowned and tried to dash behind the construct only for the eyes in the back head to start glowing and shift its arms around, keeping the arrow trained on her. She tries to hit it only for her to feel like she just slashed at a building as her imperial gold knife shattered and she was swatted away by one of its arms, sending her crashing heart into a pillar. Swear I will kill you Diana he said getting angry at the goddess. She was ridiculous, acting like a spoiled child that hadn't got her way. She pulled herself out of the pillar and spat out golden incher. I won't swear you vile man. You can't 
can't kill me, you are a lowly demigod she says before dodging a massive arrow, just barely. Then I will have to bring you to near death he says as the massive katana was swung down on her, she tried to block it, forgetting how it broke one of her knives just by being hit alone, her other knife shattered like ice, and she was sent crashing through the thick platform she was on just to crash into another below it. He sighed as he jumped down to the below platform with his Susano still active, he saw Diana crawl out of the crater she had formed, one of her arms was hanging limply from her side as she drew her last knife, golden incher basically pouring from her, he frowned at her Diana, your pride keeps leading you to situations like these, remember last time that I did nothing, you fought me, I defended and left, then you found me again and I defeated you, now you found me yet again, I warn you, and you took the hard path and look where it has got you he said stepping towards her, she was swaying as she looked to be about to keel over, swear and I will heal you and let you leave, keep this up and you will have to reform, I do not wish to fight, especially not a goddess, who will look after and guard your hunters he said, making her frown, then it dawned on her, had she been so pig-headed and prideful, had she started acting like the male she so despised. She let the knife fall from her hand as she looked to him I am sorry, I won't bother you, I swear she says as her vision started to fade, she started to fall, and the last thing she saw was one of the hands catch her and lay her down gently before she passed out. He sighed as he laid her down and faded Susano out of existence and nearly fell to the ground himself. You definitely need to train using Susano, try using one part at a time, like summoning an arm or a rib cage before going slowly to a full body. The only reason you could use a full one was that I was helping as well as Tenno Shinju explains, as Naruto takes takes some deep breaths and sheaths Tenno and seals it away. He creates a shikujo to help him stay up as he walked over to Diana or Artemis, whoever she was, this dual personality crap was confusing him too much, he crouched down and ran his hand over Diana, coating his hand in medical chakra, he learned this with scrolls he got from Tsunade over the two years from the slugs, he could sense numerous broken bones, some pierced or crushed organs and severe trauma, he frowned as he laid his sun mark on her forehead and channeled medical chakra through it, he found the mark itself could regenerate small organs, such as eyes or fingers, hands if he pushed it, but if he channeled Shinja's chakra or medical chakra through it, he could regenerate much larger things and fix things even faster. He sensed her organs healing and her bones piecing themselves back together, her cuts were slowly healing, and her skin regained a healthy glow. He groaned as he sat up and went to rest up against a pillar, waiting for her to wake up, time flowed here the same as in the real world, but he had no way to tell what time it was, not like it really mattered, not like he was needed anywhere right now. He closed his eyes and decided for a small nap. Hours later, he awoke once Diana started to wake and noticed she turned back to Artemis, she sat up and looked at herself to see all wounds gone and any pain she felt before had vanished. You are lucky I was here, if not you wouldn't have made it, too much damage inside so even if you tried ambrosia and nectar would do nothing to help it as it wouldn't be able to make it to your stomach, she hears Naruto say as she turned to him, embarrassed and disappointed in herself for acting in such a way. Relax, I can feel your emotions from here, I do not hate you, nor do I think of you as a nuisance, you merely let your pride get the better of you, it can happen to all of us he says as he stands using the shikujo to help, as long as you grow from this experience, I see no reason to speak of this to anyone he said, extending his hand to her, offering to help her stand, she nods and accepts the hand I would appreciate that, and I am quite sorry for everything I have caused you she says with a frown, he waves it off it is fine, consider it fine and the oath vanished, though I do wish for you to keep the fact of my adopted daughter a secret still he said shocking the goddess, you adopted a girl, why? She asks, still wary as a man his age adopting a daughter is confusing. He shrugged his shoulder she was in danger. I saved her from her asshole father and gave her a normal-ish life he said erasing his shikujo as his muscles were fine. He turned back to Artemis so shall we leave. He asks getting a nod from her. He took a deep breath and opened his eyes Kamui he whispered, taking them back to the real world. Real world. Once he was out he noticed the sun was setting. He turned to Artemis to see her standing nervously relax Artemis. I won't say a word of our fight to anyone. As long as you don't speak of my daughter he said calming her a bit. He understood she was worried of people seeing her as brash and pig-headed as the males she bashed on. Look he'll even give you this he says tossing her a marker. If you ever need me for anything just stab it in the ground and it'll be there in a flash he says getting a hesitant nod from her. She wasn't weary just embarrassed as she had never been given a gift from any male. She hid her blush behind her bangs. She shook it off and nodded as she slipped it inside a gear. If we ever cross paths again, I would like to spar with you, for a male you have great skill she says as she walks away. He chuckles sounds like a deal Artemis, until next time he said as the goddess disappeared in a silver flash, he smiled as he went off, still needing to decide what to do while Thalia was away. Minus four months later, Thalia was still not back, but from what he heard from his hawk summon she was making good progress. He had been a rare case where becoming a sage was easy.
but Thalia was making good progress for someone not like that, also apparently cried tears of happiness when she got his present and wore it every day, that made him smile, over the four months he stayed in New York deciding to stay in the flat nearby Sally's though she never noticed him, he also trained in his pocket dimension to get a better grasp over Susano, so far he could summon one arm and a ribcage with little to no difficulty, but anything more was quite exhausting, but progress was progress, he also was finally able to access his bone pulse abilities, which weirded him out the first time, but gradually got used to it, though he mostly used it to reinforce his body and create quick weapons, he was going about a normal day, training when he felt a pull of a marker, a new marker, he grabbed his scroll and quickly flashed away, Amp half blood, he flashed there and the first thing he noticed was Sally in the grips of a minotaur and Percy with his hand on the marker, he saw Sally smile sadly before turning to golden dust and vanishing, she had been abducted by Hades as he was the only one to have control over any kinds of monsters, that god had just made a big mistake, he glares at the beast and bursts into his cloaked form and slammed the minotaur with a strong punch to the face, breaking bones and sending it crashing through multiple tress, he turned to Percy go up the hill with your friend, explain them the son of chaos has returned he said, as Percy just stared at him in shock, go. He ordered snapping him out of his shock, Percy grabbed Grover and headed up the hill, limping as the car crash had hurt him a bit more, as well as barely surviving that weird beast, once Percy was up the hill the minotaur charged at Naruto, he held out a hand and stopped him dead in his tracks, Naruto stared in the eyes of the frightened beast, summoning his eyes, you tell Hades I am coming for Sally, she has nothing to do with this, and I won't let her be a hostage he says before crushing the beast's head, leaving behind a pair of horns which he promptly sealed away, he walked up the hill to see Chiron standing nervously just stood around watching yet again, he asks with a hint of anger in his voice. Tyron paled a bit before clearing his throat, you know we cannot interfere as children reach us, he says before feeling killer intent coming from Naruto, they are children. He yelled before calming himself down, whatever just tell me when Percy wakes up he says before heading towards the cabins, where are you going? You can't go in any of the cabins still he yelled as he followed the blonde. Naruto sighed and ran through the hand signs and slammed his hands down wood style. Four pillar house he yells creating a large wooden house next to Hermes cabin, getting the attention of the campers, it looked like a log cabin you'd find in the woods, it was nearly as big as Hermes cabin, he saw Annabeth looking at him curiously, as she seemed to want to ask him something, he also saw Luke send him a subtle nod which he returned, he turned and looked at Chiron, I deemed this cabin for Hestia, my patron he says as the symbol for the hearth was burned above the door, seconds later a bolt of lightning tried to hit it, only for the wooden house to absorb it like it was nothing, gonna have to try harder than that asshole. He yelled making the sky rumble, he turned to Chiron Hestia as an original Olympian, and the eldest child of Kronos and Rey, she deserves some tribute and representation at camp, and as her champion I am doing so, he says making the horseman frown at the sky, tell me when dinner is he says closing the cabin door behind him, he unsealed the furniture and set clones up to get it set up, he sneaked outside and saw Hestia near the fire again with a warm smile on her face, as she waved at him and mouthed the words thank you, he nodded and smiled back, he sneaked off to the arena as most of the camp was trying to get into his cabin, but found it not budging as only a champion of Hestia, or someone with Hestia's permission could open it, seconds later Annabeth storms in with Luke standing guard near the door, where have you been these last years? She yells, asking at him, he had calmed her down after he saved her and Luke, she had been crushed by the loss of Thalia, and then her savior had left, Naruto sighed I didn't want to stay in this backwards camp, so I traveled, killed some monsters, became a champion, and received some blessings from a god and goddess, also I fraught a goddess, I've been busy he says getting a frown from Annabeth, whatever, maybe with you here we can get a quest she says nodding only to get a bop on her head, I'm not going on a quest, I could care less of some oracle deciding if I should fail or not, I've never been one to let fate control me, he said walking away, why did you leave? She asks in a whisper, but he and Luke heard it clearly, H sighed and looked back at the blonde girl, after Thalia was imprisoned by the idiot Zeus I couldn't stay at the stupid camp, I traveled and grew stronger, so I could eventually get her out of that tree he said, lying a bit as he walked past Luke, Luke nods to him before walking over to Annabeth, he could feel her sadness and a bit of anger from her, she most likely had one of a child of Athena's fatal flaws, hubris or being too prideful, hopefully hers wasn't that bad, he left the arena, he came here to train a bit, but Annabeth and Luke sort of ruined it, he sighed and walked around camp, he old left Burr he owed Sally to at least help her son before he left to save her from Hades, minus two days later, Naruto sighed thinking if Percy was truly this stupid, not only was he denying everything even when there was proof in front of him, but he was also insulting Dionysus, now he could piss off God's cause his blessings kept him safe, and the asshole was a one trick pony with his stupid bolts, but Percy was a demigod with no such blessings, he grow and slapped Percy upside the back of his head Percy, think before you talk, annoying the gods will get you killed he said, making the kid grumble and rub his head, does my mom know what you are? 
He asks finally noticing his horns and remembering the fact he had a weird fire emote. Naruto nods of course she does, I told her shortly after meeting her. I even gave her a tag to help hide you, he says grabbing Percy's arm and ripping off a paper tag, instantly Percy's demigod aura returned. So that is why Grover had trouble finding him, Chiron says stroking his beard, what is that slip by the way? He asks. Naruto glares at him none of your business, but if you must know it hides a demigod's aura. Hell this and other things is how I stay hidden from all the gods and goddess he says ignoring the rumble in the sky. Tyrant clears his throat well I believe Percy needs to be shown around camp, Naruto do you want to do it? He asks. Nope, give him to someone else, I'm not a babysitter, I may know him, but I have other things to do he says getting up and heading towards the door. We didn't dismiss you boy he hears Dionysus say in an annoyed tone. Naruto scoffs and looks back to Dionysus with his Shinju eyes active, you don't command me Dionysus, and you know it, if I didn't obey the full council what makes you think he'll listen to you? Your madness doesn't affect me he says as he walks out the door. He ignored the stares of campers as he kept walking until he heard a new voice call out for him. He turned around to see Claris walking up to him with two others behind her. He rose an eyebrow, curious as to what they were going to do. What do you want Claris, daughter of Ares? He asks in a flat tone, annoyed that people keep bugging him. Ares Cabin wanted to ask you if you'd like to join our side and capture the flag. It's a war game the camp holds to help hone our senses. Since you are technically Hestia Cabin she asks in a semi-respectful tone. Claris was a tough-looking girl. Muscular but not overly so. Her choice of clothes just made her look more masculine than she really was. She wore a red version of the camp shirt and camo cargo pants with a bandana around her head, her brown hair and a ponytail. He sighed no, I have fought in war before and I don't feel like playing it with kids, no offense, but when I fight I don't play around unless I am training someone he said. Noticing the frown on the two people behind Claris, is that all you wanted to ask or do you have more? He asks though he really just wanted to go and train. I was wondering how you killed the Minotaur, because from what I saw you entered camp with no weapon she says, remembering how she heard stories of how he fought an army of Hades minions with no blade, only weird floating orbs and a spiraling sphere thing. He groaned I crushed its head with my bare hand, does that satisfy you? He says back in a hurried tone can I go now? He asks as he sees Percy and Annabeth coming towards him. No Clara says, I want you to train me she says in a confident tone. He stared at her blankly before pinching the bridge of his nose, he let out a sigh why do you fight? He asks confusing her, answer that question, and if I like your answer I will consider training you he says tapping his foot impatiently as Annabeth was getting closer and he could see that spark in her eyes, that means she wanted answers. I fight to defeat my enemies and crush them she says making him groan. No, that is a terrible reason to fight, think it over and find your actual answer, that felt like an answer forced out, most likely taught to all Ares campers due to their lineage he says patting her on the back before disappearing in an orange flash. Claris frowned and was slightly angry but felt true in his words, she was upset over it and needed a stress relief, and what a coincidence, a newbie to initiate. As to Cabin, he sighed as he just barely escaped Annabeth and her horde of questions, he smiled as he saw Hestia near the fireplace he created using Earth style, what can I do for you Hestia? He says with a smile as he sits down on a chair across from her. She smiled back my brother's bolt is missing, and I fear him and Poseidon will fight, resulting in the deaths of many mortals, you need to help somehow, but I think Percy is Poseidon's son she says summing Coco for her and him. Naruto nods and takes a drink of his Coco, he is Poseidon's son though do not say anything till he is claimed, I fear Zeus will force the boy to retrieve it, he says making her frown, do not worry, I will forcefully tag along, as that boy is way too unskilled to survive on his own, he says calming the goddess. Thank you Naruto, you being there to keep him safe will ease my worries, and knowing Poseidon, it will ease his worries as well she says as she stands from her chair. I must go back to Olympus as myself and Demeter are the only ones that can keep them from fighting each other, if you need anything, just sacrifice a letter and a fire to me she says as she waves goodbye and flashes away. He groaned as he sat down the cup, he really didn't want to go on any quest, but he cold turned down Hestia, something about her made him want to keep her happy, he sat in a meditative pose, he was going to meditate until he heard an explosion, and the sound of gushing water in the distance, Percy, I swear I will beat your idiocy out of you he thought as he sat up and left the cabin. As the day went on he kept an eye on Percy, and he could say without a doubt in his mind the boy was very dumb. He heard that he pissed off Claris by insulting her and Ares blatantly, then when Claris tried to initiate him or something he doused her, her two friends and Annabeth in toilet water. He challenged Luke the best swordsman in the camp to a fight due to him being annoyed. Luke defeated him numerous times, until Percy unknowingly used on of his demigod abilities to enhance his traits with water. After that he could feel some smugness in the boy. How no one noticed he was a son of Poseidon after those two incidents he had no idea, were people more oblivious to blatant signs in this realm.
the lack of skill with a bow and arrow should pointed to it more since Poseidon's lineage was cursed by Artemis to never have skill with a bow. Ever since Orion tried to rape her and her hunters, Percy definitely had no bow skills, as when he tried he shot his bow backwards into Chiron's tail or a tree. He laughed at Chiron and healed the tree which now earned him nymphan girls, as they loved his attachment to nature. He blamed Percy for that. Days went by and Naruto was very bored and annoyed at having to stay here. He needed Poseidon to claim him and get the quest on the road so he could go off to the underworld. It was finally time.